and welcome to the Brazil Expat Journal, a very good DJ that you can trust. And I'm here with Pete, as usual, every other Monday to talk about life in this huge country, Brazil. And tonight we have a doozy of a show for you because we have Maya, who is a U.S. expat from New York, but was born in the South, in Alabama. She lives in Bahia, in Matos, de São João. And we have one of our favorite people back, who's, she's always hanging out, even if we're doing like the movie podcast, and it's Renee. And Renee, does Renee even need an introduction? Prandada, <laughs> Prem, uh, <laughs> Uh, she's got her own YouTube channel, so check out that Prandata Prem Pran YouTube channel, and she talks about everything, and she's so open. And tonight we're going to be talking <laughs> And I talk about sex, baby. <laughs> Let's go yes, yes. Baby. Tonight we are talking S-E-X. <laughs> yeah, unfiltered talk, as usual, and I love it when the ladies are on because Pete and I are such, like, scumbag the ladies the ladies bring a little <laughs> to our show uh and but before we do that guys we would be remiss to not give a tribute to a friend of ours and give me a second because i do need to share the screen here because i have a very nice picture of our friend watif there he is right there and he passed away um, very recently came to as a shock to a lot of folks because he was the face of YouTube for so many uh, in the expat community. Uh, and I think that extends beyond the black expat community because, you know, the, obviously he worked a lot with the black ex expats, but he was all over the place. And I do want to say some words uh, before we, oh, I got that little duck right in front of his name. Um, I do want to say some words before we move on. And if Renee and Pete want to share something. And, and I know, uh, Maya, you never really got to meet him, but I know you saw a lot of his posts and stuff. So if you want to add anything, um, feel free. And we just came from one of uh, memorial service for him, which was really beautiful. So that's why we're a little bit late coming on tonight. Thank you if you guys are coming in from there. And if you want to share anything, if you want to put some words up, I see Jeffrey's on there. What's up, family? Um, feel free. But guys, Watif, I want to say two things here, uh, which I think are really important. Oh, family? Ah, um, I don't want to say that. Okay. And they relate to a few comments on the um, – interview that he did with us, right, Pete? He was here. Yeah, he was here a month ago. One month ago. That's what it says here on the YouTube channel. And I just want to read two comments from that were left there and then comment on them because I think it would be really important for those that listened to that interview. Um, and, oh, God, there you go. Live. Live podcasting. I clicked on the wrong link. Sorry, guys. Okay. So anyway, um, and the first comment is from Global Go Getter, who's always on, and I really appreciate his comments. Uh, he gives a lot of nice constructive criticism. Or she, I'm not sure who Global Go Getter is, and he said, "Good info." A little abrasive on the interviewing between yourself and <laughs> that time, the energy was a bit dismissive. And uh, I love this comment because it's true. Okay. And it was I'm, great though. It was great. It was that great. Was, that it was, was good. Great. You guys got into it, man. Yes, we got into it. Um, but, you know, of all the Brazil expat journals that I have done, I think that was the toughest one because I really looked up to Watif. Watif is somebody that got me back into doing this stuff that I what I've done pretty much my whole life, which is communicating, writing, and all of this stuff. So I had been wanting him on for a long time, but I was a little bit nervous at the start because I've had I had the Brazil Expat Journal, the first edition, which Renee was on, where I, it was recorded. I was afraid to go on live for reasons like this, you know, in case we had a little uh, slip up or something, and. Um, 
it was nerve wracking when I finally was like, I got the guts to ask him to be on. Cause I know Watif created a brand on himself of himself so quickly on YouTube. And the last thing yeah. that I wanted to do is f make him feel like, Hey, I am just riding off his coattails. Like I just want Watif on my channel to raise my view count or anything like that. Like I wanted to feel like, Hey, I established my own brand, the Brazil expat journal. It's free. As in terms of like the topics we talk about, it's a little bit looser than like how he does his, his, um, how he did his broadcast. I got my own thing going over here. So I wanted to establish that before I got the guts to be like, man, I got to go talk to the Godfather now and have him on. So I was a nervous wreck. I'm not going to lie. So that when I listen back, I usually listen back to all the broadcasts as soon as they're done, just to take notes, see what I did wrong, see what I could have done better. And even to timestamp it, that one, I'm not going to lie to you. It took me about two or three weeks before I listened. <laughs> I was because I know I was so nervous, Pete, and I and I didn't. Yeah, ask I, I listened to it last week, actually, just because, you know, that's when we got the news and um yeah it's it's not it's it's one of our rockier shows but, it is um, it is because you know with watif you got to come with your a game and that's what i was nervous about yes. watif can easily take over like renee was talking about in the uh, memorial how he commands the room and i was like oh my god how am i gonna keep this interview flowing knowing that if i have a a a, a moment he can just rattle off like 10 facts in a second yeah, which oh, you did yeah yeah so i was totally nervous so i get your comment that maybe it did sound as if we were a bit dismissive but it wasn't dismissive at all it was absolute nervousness on my part and i and how much i respected him and i wasn't even sure if he appreciated what i did and then i'm thinking like he wouldn't have come on if he didn't you know and he's somebody that just helped me everything from knowing how to make a thumbnail. Like, I mean, we got a real nice thumbnail for our show. Like I, I didn't know how to do that. I didn't know just how the first thing about getting my stuff out there. So the Brazil expat journal is one, well, I'm not gonna say 100% because I, you know, it's something that I wanted to do, but it's a whole lot of Watif kicking me in the butt saying, do this. And the most important thing is that this YouTube podcasting stuff can be very competitive. And yeah. he made a business out of it. Like his YouTube channel was not just for fun, like ours is. His was actual business. And not once did he charge me anything. Not once if I asked him for help, did he say, oh, man, figure it out yourself. No, he would stop everything, send me information. Look, read these books. I remember when we first started, I I was on his channel way when he was back when he was just starting. And he... um. I asked him some questions, man. He sent me like three or four books, like immediately, like read this, read this, wow. read this. I was like, Good Lord. So that's what it's about. And then the second thing I want to read Nick Turner's comment, which says, hi, Phil. I have re listened to your interview with Watt following his unexpected and shocking death this week. I liked how you reflected at one hour and six minutes that he got kinder and acquired softer edges since arriving here in Brazil. <laughs> that the country or rather the people had changed him on a human level. He certainly had a positive impact on many people he seems to have known. I hope that you and others who knew him better than I did are coping with the loss. And I want to bring this up because before we went, went on uh, and before Pete had arrived in the broadcast studio, I was talking to Watif and I was so glad that I got to ask him that question at the end because that's something that I noticed and we're all you know, we're, we, we weren't sugarcoating stuff in the memorial, and I won't sugarcoat stuff now. What well, teeth was sometimes hard to handle. And he could come at you with this energy like, oh, back off, right? But yeah. he appreciated himself to you because he knew he meant well, like he was trying to help you. So when... It doesn't help that. that he's a giant with a loud voice, too. Yes. <laughs> like that yeah. level of intensity combined with his physical frame and his voice, yes. that's, like, that's a lot. <laughs> he, he couldn't help it. But what I noticed, and I had heard other people tell me the same thing, was, man, Watif's gotten softer. Like, And I mean that in the most respectful way, not like he's a soft dude. But, you know, he's he's seems like he's, he's just toned down a little bit. And I 
felt that too. And I always felt that that was with his time in Brazil, uh, the people that he met here, because Brazil's got a tendency to do that. It's, it's you know, and I, I want to, I want to just add in. I'm sorry to interrupt, yeah. but um, because I noticed that too, and I was thinking, and I would say, I think it has to do with his wife Lillian. I, mm -hmm. you know, because w when I met him too, I, I was one of the first persons that he met coming to Brazil, right? And you know, and I share that in the tribute, and he was very intense, very intense. And, you know, like you're saying, he had a great heart. He was a good person. So you knew that whether he was saying things that you wanted to hear or not. But over the time from the last time that I saw him, exactly what you're saying, he he kind of got a little less intense. Yes. He got a, and, I, and I would say, I think it has to do with his wife. I was like, she must be really good for him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that'll do it. I, I just, I was just so, you know, so at, privately, I'm not going to say everything you said in private, but privately I went a little bit more at length of how I felt about that. And I told, and I told him that's a good thing. And then at the end, I asked him that question, you know, how has Brazil changed you? And he went straight into the business. And I'm like, well, it's yeah. maybe Lester, it's maybe this. And I'm like, come on, Matif, stop being Matif for one second. And I was like, no, man, like on a human level. And I and he did he, totally soften up too. When he you, did. When you That's what that, not, he's like, yeah. I know. Right. So I'm so proud that I got maybe Watif to blush a little bit towards the end of that interview because I told him it's a good thing. And he gave that uh, sheepish sm uh, smile that he would give. And I was like, thank you, man, because it's a good thing. Like, you know, you don't have to be hardcore 100% of the time and, and you can still be you. So, mm -hmm. yes, uh, it, it, I was nervous. I, 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 and in just a second, Renee, and I'll let you talk. I'm sorry. Because I just think it's important because I, I cringe when I hear some parts of that interview because I was nervous. And being as though that's the last register, like, uh, probably of Watif on a public forum, it's like, that's it. You know, and we even got into it in the middle about, you know, a little choice of words that I use versus the uh, choice of words that he used to describe black people. And I was like, oh, my God, like, what was I doing? But then there were some really great parts of the interview. I think the majority of it was great. But then at the end, when we did the, the quiz and, you know, we lightened up, I was like, ah, oh, you know, it's like. Just relax. I just had to tell myself, relax. He wouldn't be here if he didn't appreciate what you were doing. Uh, he would send me messages sometimes on WhatsApp. Hey, do you have any recommendations for this and that? So I had to realize he does appreciate what you do because I, I, I really looked up to him and I felt like sometimes he's like, oh, who's this weirdo over here doing whatever the fuck he's doing? <laughs> I realized, no, he did appreciate the work that I do. Um, you know, he's not going to be able to be replaced, but we're here, guys, you know, if you want to share anything about him or anything. So not dismissive Global Go tra uh, Trotter. We would just let him speak. I'm not here to debate anybody on the show. And I almost got into that trap with him when he was on. If you got a viewpoint, maybe I don't agree with it. I'm just going to be okay. And then we're going to just move on. Now, Renee, have you got any mm -hmm. words? Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, just listening to you talk, it's it, it's it's so interesting because, you know, very similar when we've been on YouTube together. Like it, you know, quite honestly, it took me some time before I even would agree to go on with him because I know he's, you know, you got to be on your A game, and. I am very much an alpha female <laughs> and he's an alpha, alpha male. And so, you know, I, um, I have my opinions and, you know, and so, you know, it does make you kind of get nervous because <laughs> yes. it's like you're on and I'm like, he's a great friend and I respect him and I love him and I don't want to be on, on this live and go head to head with him. <laughs> and if I do go to head to head, I have to make sure I know what I'm talking about, right? So it's just so much, but it's been fun being on with him um, on these lives, on these YouTube channels. And he really just pushes you and he's just so great. And um, I was thinking about when, when you were talking as well. I remember, you know, you and I were on um, the adult conversations 
And I remember I had Watif come on. And you know, remember Watif joined us uh, once or twice. And um, mm-hmm. after I remember talking to Watif, I was like, man, Watif, you know, you were great. You gave us the great information. I was like, well, come on here and just connect. Like, don't, 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 you don't have to work. You don't have to work. You don't have to sell your stuff. Just, just be. And, um, and you know, and, and, and I, I knew I could tell like he didn't really agree to what I said, but he didn't argue with me. He didn't argue with me. He was just like, you know, he didn't say anything. And I was like, hmm. You know, so I, I learned a lot from him. And, yes. and the thing is, and one of the biggest things that I learned, and he would always say, don't argue with anyone. Yes. And he's like, I'm not going to waste that time, that energy to argue with someone. And it's like, you know, you, you do you, you do what you agree. And if, if you know, and I've seen in, in certain situations, even in our black expat group, where someone has tried to like talk bad about him or, or get him in an argument and he wouldn't get in it. He was just like, no, like that's not worth my time. Like that's not worth my energy. He would put his energy into, you know, what mattered, what was important. And that is something that I still need to learn from him that I'm still working on. And I think that a lot of people can take that. And we're gonna be go, we're gonna be talking about dating. That's something that I could learn from okay. dating because yeah. sometimes these Brazilian men just piss you off. <laughs> and it's like you gotta learn to just okay, walk we, away. We, we gotta say we gotta say what would Watif do? <laughs> so I'm gonna start using that in my dating. What would Watif do? Because I could I could go, I could go and I could be argumentative, but I'm gonna have to just from now on be like, what will Watif do? Yes, yes. Um, and that's the thing, guys, is that his his reach, it went beyond just the information that he gave. Because like I said, like I, I appreciated his Bitcoin stuff. He tried to talk me in, uh, getting into that, like yeah, the the expat, uh, what is it, the relocation program. It was very interesting, but it wasn't anything that I was really into. Yet, I still ended up learning so much from him because of how he lived his life and how he let himself be himself. And that made me be more myself, you know, and be open and talk about my relationships. And I was even nervous at the beginning, you know, you know, if he knew that I was gay or not or bisexual or whatever. I don't even know what I am anymore. Uh, yeah. you know, well, you better still- be at least bi because I still got it. I still want a chance with you. OK, good. Uh, but you know he's, he's completely open, like he didn't care. You know his thing, obviously, Renee was not sex uh, tantric sex therapy, and his right. thing was obviously maybe not what Pete and I talk about because we get silly and we talk about prostitutes and this and that and the third. But he never once would be like, oh, you know, like that's some bullshit. You know, what are you doing? No, he's like, that's your audience. Go after your audience grab your audience, connect with these folks. And it's like, yeah, just be you, be the best you that you can be. And like I said, in the memorial, that even went to the music, you know, and how I've finally gotten back to music. That was a lot inspired by, look at what this dude's doing, you know, and he's just going after his stuff. You're gonna get your audience at some point, but you just gotta keep going. And like I said in that song that that I sang, like we think we're ahead, but really, we're a million miles behind because, you know, we only do the Brazil Expat Journal by by month, you know, by weekly. And he was on like every damn day shaving that, you know, brushing that beard. Um, yeah. So, you know, he was a mover. He was a mover. Um, you got anything you want to say, Pete? Yeah. Um, I want to say that Watif made me feel incredibly lazy, actually. Yes. <laughs> um, I, I, I would see, because, like, the thing is, unlike you, I, I didn't know Watif personally. Like, we've never actually hung out in person. In fact, the podcast was the first time that I actually had a conversation with him. But we've been connected on social media for years. I don't know how he found me. He added me. Might have been through you or might have been through one of the expat groups. But I was following this guy and he's like giving these, you know, he's like Jordan Peterson really. He's like giving these hardcore rules for life. And he's like, I'm using these and I'm succeeding. And I was like, motherfucker, like you do like more shit by nine o'clock in the morning than I do in an entire week. Like, yeah. 
<laughs> it, it was really actually inspiring to see him just say like focus mother and that's one thing about what that i got is that he was super focused like he's like i am not going to accept anything less than being the best me i can be and it was it was genuinely inspiring so i enjoyed that experience we had and another thing about what i love because besides the uh being an expat in brazil what else did I have in common with this guy? He was a huge X-Men fan, and so <laughs> am I. And, and we had a lot of conversations about the X-Men stories of the 90s. And, you know, I enjoyed that because that was one of the few times I got to talk to him where he wasn't in this ramped up, intense, like, self-help guru type mode. That was one of the few times where, like, we just talked about shit which which was nice you know because it can be a bit intimidating to have this dude in your face all the time like be better be your best all this like it it's a good thing but at the same time it can become a bit much at times so it was cool that he had this geek side where he was able to just like yeah oh, yeah fuck i love the x-men man Oh, he was so, a total nerd. I love that about him. When when I yeah. would hang out with him and I'd see he had the Thundercat shirt and I'd comment yeah. on it. And that's when you got the biggest Watif smile. And he had the biggest smile, man, because he was so serious all the time. You know, yeah. like they said, when we went into the adult conversations, he was in there like ready for business. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> but then when you got him and you got him on the geek stuff, it's like then you saw yeah. Kid come out of Watif, you know, like he's just a big baby. He's so wonderful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he he definitely had a total big side and a very yeah. big kid side, and mm -hmm. it it was a nice balance because yes, like definitely. his intensity could be a bit much at times. It but could be. It, yeah, it served it served him very well though. Like you, it, it's inspiring that you know he's saying like, look, I can do this you can too and yeah. you know i i remember like watching some of his youtube videos in my underwear thinking okay so like he's out there doing this and i'm watching youtube in my underwear so maybe he's got a point yes yes and that's the thing that that's i think that's the biggest takeaway like just be the best you you know don't take uh don't take no for an answer when it comes to yourself and what where you want to be, you know, regardless of whether you want to be on YouTube or you just want to live your life. And speaking of which, being the best you and working for what, you know, you really want. I want to get Maya in here because tell us a little bit about this project that you're doing in your little town of Matos de San Juan Bahia. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, first, I just want to say, of course, you know, condolences to everyone who lost Watif. Like you mentioned, I didn't know him personally, but who um, among expats didn't know his videos? You know, um, yeah. there are so many of his videos that I remember seeing and, and just thinking, wow, this guy is like really full of life and so multidimensional. Often when you see people's YouTube channels, you're like, yeah, this guy has like one stick and that's what he's doing. But he seemed so multidimensional and had so many different things to talk about. So just, you know, condolences to everybody who lost him. He really seemed like an awesome person. He definitely but to mention, sorry, to, to, uh, to mention about my, um, my house that I'm building. So I'm, I'm like I mentioned an hour north of Salvador and um, this area was like totally unknown to me before a random visit that I did here and um, I ended up buying property here I knew I wanted to buy property in Brazil and I looked around a bunch of different places and Salvador was where I had come to visit uh, initially and where I was when I decided that I wanted to try to live in Brazil and so I ended up buying this property here and it's been a complete whirlwind of adventure, learning, difficulties, ripping my hair out, um, just a roller coaster ride of emotions. 
So I'm building a container house on 1,500 square meters of rural property. Um, and it's just been really interesting dealing with uh, contractors and learning about construction stuff. I've never built a house before. Um, I'm trying to do a lot of do-it-yourself stuff. And um, I think that's something that I could perhaps speak to other expats about the challenges of doing um, construction here as well as doing it yourself. Um, because it's just a whole, it's it's an undertaking. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to share. Sounds like a big project. It is. I'm going to share here, if you allow me to, Mia, uh, this a few pictures. Is that cool? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm sure it's kind of like, yeah, rough, unfinished at the moment. I'm living in my house right now, and it's still not completed. So... That also is an adventure. Yeah, so she's, look at this, guys. She's like, there's the container, there are the containers, I imagine. There's a little dog down there. Yes. Yeah. So that's it. That, But I love this, the fact that you're doing this. You're just taking on this adventure. And we'll definitely have you back to talk <clears throat> about this specifically. Because one thing that does interest me are expats that live outside of the big cities you know those that have ventured out into brazil brazil is a huge country but most of the expats are rio sao paulo rio sao paulo and then you get a couple in salvador and then rio sao paulo and then you get a couple in curitiba then back to rio some it's like come on boring you know this yeah, is I'm, not um, I'm for sure random here and i'm not i i think i'm not what you would expect to see um, in Salvador, as far as expats, or or, or as far as just people in general, um, and certainly not an hour north of Salvador, I would say. There you go. So that's really cool. And but I mentioned that because, guys, it's like that's like the Watif spirit. It's like just go and do it. You know, you you got this dream, you got this vision. Don't let anything hold you back, and just go for it. I mean, that's Watif basically it you know so even if you weren't into whatever he was into at the moment as far as his business side you could garner something from him as just uh as the person that he was and that he lived i know i know and actually one of the worst things about this for me personally um is that um we talked about his business I was like, damn, this motherfucker could help me. And I was to we, we totally talked about it at the end of the show. I was like, all right, dude, like, let's set up a meeting. But then, like, I think it was like two days after the broadcast, he told me that he was in the hospital. And I was like, all right, well, I guess we'll just wait for him to get out and I, I, I'll, I'll deal with it then. But yeah, never happened. So because, unfortunate because I feel like it's a lost opportunity for a friendship. We were connected on social media for a long time and we had interactions, but you know, this was like the next step and it didn't happen. All right, guys, I'm going to try something crazy real quick because we do want to get to our main topic, but raining woman Ooh. asked if she could just say something real quick and Pete, this will be our test because one thing that I do want to try with the podcast is do like an open lines type of thing. Right. So woman, I'm going to send a link here and please guys for tonight, cause we do want to move on. Uh, cause for me, that's the biggest tribute to what is just get on with the show. But if you click on this link, I'm pretty sure that you can get on the broad in the broadcast studio and we'll let you say some words. And she was really wonderful. She said a lot of nice prayers and a lot, read a really beautiful poem for what uh, during the memorial service. So the link I sent there is for Raining Woman. Click on that. See if you can get in the broadcast studio. Otherwise, I'm not sure if I can get you on unless I send that to you, like in a private, like through your WhatsApp or Facebook or something. But it'll be a test case because Pete and I were discussing trying to do that, making like an open calls type night and stuff like that. Because I would love to have uh, 
the opportunity to talk to a lot of you guys live. And thank you, actually. There's something Watif taught me how to do and I'm not doing. At the beginning of every broadcast, well, Renee too, right, Renee? Because then I, I shared that information with Renee. At the beginning of every broadcast, thank everybody for listening in. Please like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, I know. <laughs> we're terrible at that. We're the worst. We, I, we are. We are. <laughs> and Watif was really good at that. I had not yet. We got to yes. remember to do that. Yes, you got to remember to do that. So thank you. Because sometimes, guys, Pete and I will come up with a show topic. And I'm, I'm like, yeah, Pete, we might be on for like 30 minutes, 40 minutes top. It'll be a quickie. Yeah. And then we're on for like two hours because everybody's on and they're talking to us. And we're like, it's really fun. It's really fun. So um, let me see. if she, Oh, she got on. So there you go. There you are, reigning woman. Hi, hi. Thank you all for having me. And I do want to go ahead and be brief like you asked. There was something that was being said that I wanted to comment on and give some food for thought or perspective, okay? And that is a lot of people saying, well, you know, I didn't know him personally. I didn't know him personally. I didn't know him personally. I would like to render this for thought. You may not have met him in person. But we certainly, and I, I've never met him in person, but we certainly knew him personally because he shared of himself to us from his person, not just from and about YouTube or ventures or travel, but everything that he shared with us, he shared from his person. The tribute that was given to him was given because of how we felt personally, because that was how we knew him personally. And that's all I want to share. Thank you. And that was beautiful. And that's, and that's totally a Watif thing. Like none of what you got from his channel or from him on Facebook, from him personally, you know, uh, in quotes, uh, because you're totally right about what you said was him. It was 100% him. And, and I love people like that. Uh, I'm attracted to people like that. People that think completely opposite of me. But if I feel they're authentically living the opposite of me, those are the people I latch on to. So he was somebody like that, that I immediately, you know, I had to kind of figure out how I could do it because his energy was so strong. I was like, okay, I got to just kind of meditate on how I'm going to come at him and, and be able to have a good conversation with him and good times with him. But once I figured that out, I was like, this guy's amazing because he's 100% authentic. I love people like that. Uh, even if they're the uh, complete opposite of me. And I don't, I don't, I don't think Renee, anybody could be more opposite. To me. <laughs> right. <laughs> Cause you've met us both. Uh, and yet it's like, how many times, well, I don't know if I should even say this, but how many times have I, defended Watif to, to other people who are like, oh, this guy's this and this guy's that. And I'm like, dude, this guy's amazing. Like he's 100% real. If you don't dig it, go for a walk, you know? Um, so thank you. Like your words are, that, that speaks volumes because even if you didn't know him personally, you got 100% Watif. Who Watif was online on Facebook, who he was on YouTube, who he was on Instagram, it's exactly the same person he was, if you ever did get the chance to chill with him for an afternoon and have some juice at his favorite juice bar. He loved his juice bars. Oh yeah, and that is a good little juice bar. Uh, actually, if we do have our Sao Paulo get together, it's got to be there, you know, uh, at the juice bar. And that's it, you know. And I or try at Jerky's or at both. Jerky's and then the juice bar. Yeah, I can have some juice and then some meat and some chicken. And oh, mm -hmm. she left. Okay, Raining Woman, thank you for coming on. Yeah, was, thank you a lot. That was, was going to say bye to you, but that the, the wonderful words. Uh, in, and they encapsulate everything that we've been saying about our friend Watif. And be authentic, be you. Uh, and everybody that's on here tonight is 100% them, you know, and that's why they're on. Um, because otherwise I would just kick all of you out of here. <laughs> uh, but anyway, guys, tonight's topic is dating. 
And Renee's got a little bit of experience with this, uh, being working a with a little bit. Well, <laughs> the <actually>, writer. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we're, we're trying to. We're gonna try to break it down like this. We got four people. Okay, so Pete's coming from like the white heterosexual dude who's just you know trying to get some poontang and then maybe some love on the side or vice versa. Oh, Pete, I could help you with that. All right, all right, okay, good. That's why I'm here. That's why I'm here. Yeah. And, Re and, uh, and Renee, actually, let me get, let me see if I can do this so we can have the beautiful picture of us four over here. We're like the Brady Bunch. Um, <laughs> and Pradada, Pradada Prem, okay, uh, underline Tantra. Is that your Instagram? That's my Instagram. Okay, we got uh, Pradada Prem. Underline Tantra, also known as Renee. In my heart, she's always Renee. Um, she's coming from a bit more of a specialist level on so you know, because she is a uh, tantric sex therapist. She works with couples, so she has a little bit of experience on that side, but she's just as lost as all of us on, on some <laughs> pretty, much. <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. <laughs> and Maya, Maya's on as our you know, a heterosexual girl from the U.S. down here just trying to figure out Brazilian men. And she's got some great stories, I imagine, some some horror stories she has shared with us. And me, I'm coming from the kind of fluid sexuality, you know, uh, dated both men and women down here. And um, I'll give you my perspective on what some of that is. So we got a nice little mix of folks. Maya is the psycho magnet. Look at that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fight sports worldwide. Oh, well, thanks, brother. Uh, I, I, take, I take it they I, know each other. I hope. I, I'm wondering, is, that, is that Gandalf? Everybody's anonymous. I, from I don't know who people are when they come on. Did you date him? Wait, did you date him? Because he might have been the psycho that you dated. I didn't date him yet. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. Anyway, so guys, how we're going to do... Oh, it is Gandalf. Oh, speaking of great folks down in Brazil, Gandalf's a really good dude. And Gandalf, I got to talk to you because I might be coming down to Curitiba very soon. So we need to chill when I'm down there. And I think you said you wanted me on your podcast, so I'm waiting. Okay. Um, but good dude. And he took some awesome pictures of my band, so amazing picture uh amazing photographer too so anyway guys this is how we're gonna play this i got a little deck of cards here and um i'm gonna flip it and there's gonna be a question on the other side or a statement and you do your best to just give me what you think about it okay if i can get it to work right which should be like that and we'll just go around, round table, round table. We'll see if we can get through all of them. We might not, but here's the first card. I had shuffled, actually, no, no, well, it's over. I had shuffled them before, okay? I'm not cheating. Um, so I don't know what's coming next. The biggest cultural difference that bugs you with Brazilian dating? Uh, Renee, I think that's yours. <laughs> is that mine? I was trying yeah. to think. Wait, okay. I was, yeah, I was trying to think because there's so many. What do I want to share? <laughs> That's what I was thinking too. There's so many. You got to pick one. Yeah, you got to pick one. Um, okay, so one of the things that I've noticed in Salvador, because I lived in Salvador, as well as um, Rio, right? So I think right. it's probably even more common here in Rio. These guys, they will not like iron out a plan or commit. They'll like talk to you and be like, yeah, 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 we can do this. We'll talk to the other people. And then they finally decide on whatever is the best option for them. So you might think that you're going on a date and then you find out you're not. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah. So it's just, it's just, it's like, you just don't know. Whereas, you know, in, in other places or other countries, they set a date, you know, you're going on a date more than likely. Right. This is if true. I can add to that, um, I feel like there's, there's less, um, 
there's a weird thing in terms of gender roles where I feel like the woman has so much less control over what happens on the date, how things go. Um, it's less of a conversation and agreement. It's more like the guy is just kind of deciding what he wants to do and, and you're supposed to roll with it. Mm. I like well, that. Going out I like that. Unless they're going out with me because I am such an alpha female. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, Renee would not going. let you get away with that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then, uh, Maya, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something. You tell me if I'm speaking out of turn. Because you did mention something like that in the Worldwide Expats group. little plug for that group, uh, Facebook group. Um, and some folks rebutted it by saying, well, if you're in Sao Paulo, if you're in the bigger cities, you're not going to get as much of that. And I tend to agree. So, cause you seem like you're an alpha female too, at least my impression of you. And I think the guys that are out in the interior, they don't know what to do with you. They're like, whoa, <laughs> this, you know? I get a lot of that. I get a lot of um, that guys here think it's a cultural difference and they think that all American women are like me. And I don't know if I'm really a representation um, I do feel like my American girlfriends are similar to me in that sense. But like, for example, like I've gone on dates with men here and they just decide that now it's a relationship, like without asking me, like without, you know, any kind of like, hey, you know, would you like to be my girlfriend or, you know, how do you feel about this? There's no, they just decide. And so I come into conflict with a lot of men over things like this. Yeah, you got to be very clear. Yeah, Actually, you, yeah, we're also, this is a very, still a very machismo country, right? And I think that the the more the closer you are to being in a suburb or a smaller town, you're going to get that more. I agree. You know? But Renee, Renee, remember one time I was on Renee's live and then this beautiful butt walked past in the background. <laughs> yes. Um, and so I kind of, maybe I may have to take that back, what I said, Maya, because the same thing happened to me. Like, I totally, in my mind, and I thought I verbalized it, said, we're just seeing each other. And this motherfucker was living in my house for like two months. Like, he decided, like, I am now. <laughs> oh, they, they do that. They do that. Yeah. Yeah. And you yeah. don't notice it because of those beautiful butts. You're like, beautiful butt. Right. That's not just Brazil, though. That happens everywhere. I had that experience in China. I, I, I swear to God, like, I met a girl for a one-night stand, and she wound up living with me for, like, two months. Uh, a week. Oh, uh, a week after well, we hooked up. You know, I'm not going to lie. I did that in Salvador. My first boyfriend. <laughs> I Like, we went on a date, and next thing you know, within a week, I'm living with him. Because he had a place. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, why not, right? Yeah. yeah. And I think that's the, the uh, like, if we're going to give any advice, although, you know, we, we <laughs> any yeah, advice. Yeah. We're, we're terrible not. people to be giving hey, advice. Yes. Terrible people <laughs> to be giving advice. We're all single. <laughs> although, I don't know. <laughs> right? Right? Yeah. Um, but I would say at some point you do got to ride with, you know, with the rhythm of the samba a little bit when you're down here. And then if you really like somebody and they're on that level of like, cause here they have this thing where they feel like, okay, if you've been dating for like two months, you're like casado already in a way. Right. Like you're married. So, okay. Maybe in your mind, you're like, I ain't married to this motherfucker. But if you happen to like that person, yeah, okay. I can ride with it. I can ride with like, you know, little tags, whatever tag you want to use to call this relationship. I'm fine with if you're not into it, obviously, like I did with the boy, I I kicked him out. I said, man, you know, like, I <laughs> didn't he look slap him in the face. Oh, no, you slapped him in the face, didn't you? Oh, no, that's another story. That's another story. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get to that. He was really sweet. You know, he was really nice, but he just needed to get a job. Like, if he had a job, he would still, we would still probably be together. Uh, I was, you know, being sugar daddy, and I ain't old enough for that. Uh, nor do I have the financial means to do that. And so, I just had to be real with them and be like, yeah, it, this is not going to happen. And luckily I did it right before the pandemic hit and they did the lockdown because I would have been stuck with this motherfucker till like, <laughs> imagine? Oh, he lived really far. He lived like two or three hours away from me. So uh, yeah. I'm really glad that I, I, and actually thank you, Renee, because that's from when I was just starting to meet Renee and Renee 
helped me so much, which is verbalizing what you feel and what you want and what you don't want. And I was like, yeah, I don't want you in my house. Okay. <laughs> so can I actually give a little bit of advice on that too? Yes. Um, yeah. That's what you're here yeah. for. Oh, thanks. <laughs> um, you know, I would say really, because this happens a lot in Brazil, go slow. You know, especially if you're, you're a woman, whether or if you're a man, but if, if you're a woman, you can control the pace. Don't allow them to take, you know, that lead because a lot of times these men out here are just so fine. They're just so fine. And the sex is so great. You're just going to follow that lead. But it, it really is important to make sure that you're not being blinded by his beauty or her beauty, the sex. And you go slow to really get to know them. Because a lot of times these relationships will be so intense and they will move that quickly. And you end up living with them and you're married. And the next thing you know, it's like, oh, wait a minute. This person is cheating on me or this person is not motivated to do this, this, or this, yeah. or, you know, whatever have you. So go slow and date. Date more than one person until you really know um, and, and decide, okay, this is who I want to be in a relationship with. That's great advice. And mm -hmm. all, one thing I've been noticing, I don't know if it's also in the heterosexual world, but at least in the gay world, they're very much open to kind of being open. Like, okay, I'm seeing three people. I'm seeing, you know, two people. And I haven't made a decision yet on who I really want to be with. And it's not considered cheating because you're still, you're just kind of seeing people. So, um, yeah, enjoy yourself. Because that's the part that sucks. Like, you come down here. It's a beautiful country. There's some very gorgeous people. And you want to enjoy it. And then you have your, what you think, like Pete said, is a one night stand. They don't have that concept on here of a one night stand. Uh, quick aside. And then well, they do. They do. Well, they don't really. I mean, it's gotten better <clears throat> now. But real quick aside, a friend of mine who will remain nameless, <laughs> she's a Brazilian girl. She went to England and she's at the club. She's dancing, having a good time. And then she meets a guy and then they have their one night stand. And then he doesn't call her. And her being Brazilian, she's like, why didn't he call me? What happened? What's this? She got all depressed about it. And then she just, she didn't realize that because he just wanted to fuck you and he figured you were on the same vibe and that's it. Goodbye. I don't ever want to see you again. Whereas in Brazil, I always joke about how, you know, you can kiss somebody here on a first meeting, which yes. I think for an yes. American, it's way deeper to kiss somebody and be like that intense. Like, I want to kiss you. I like, had a girlfriend who never kissed me, man. I know. She, that's a, she had a weird phobia about most germs. Well, oh, wait uh, a minute. Talking about kissing. The, I, so this, this is the thing that does bug me about Brazilian dating. So imagine you're at a club or somewhere and you're talking to, to this guy or girl and yeah, you just meet and you're talking. And then, you know, in mid sentence you're talking, the next thing you know, their mouth is all over, covered in your, your face, eating your face out. Yes. <laughs> I'm like, what the hell? No, I'm like, no. there, was, there yeah. was none of that. Okay, where we're moving in for the kiss, we look into each other's eyes and then it happens. It's like, they're eating my face. And it's like literally yeah. eating my face. Yeah. And I was just like, yeah. ooh. No, it's that weird. happens a lot during carnival. That happens a lot during carnival. Oh, yeah. You're like, you're, you're like trying to collect those kisses. And, and that's what like a lot of signal Brazilian girls do is they they collect the carnival kisses. And it's like, you yeah. know, she was like, okay. And like all of a sudden, the next minute, your lower lip is bleeding. Yeah. Right. So it's, it, it, and they oh, it's it, purple. It, yeah. Yeah. Purple and it's hurting. <laughs> waiting, waiting woman, she's still with us, by the way. And thank you so much for coming on. You left kind of suddenly, but thank you for coming on. She says, I think men and women are the same everywhere. You just got to find the one that meshes with you. And yeah, it's true. No, but yeah, I don't think no, no, there's still some differences. No. I think there are differences. There yes. are differences, which um, doesn't mean you can't. In a, in a Go, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go I was ahead, just going to say, it doesn't mean that you can't find somebody that does mesh with you, but right. there are differences, like clear right. differences. 
Right. And I agree with that. There are clear differences. And yes, you got to find the one that meshes with you. And I think in general, men and women are the same in general, but there's a lot of cultural differences. And I have, I mean, even me who've been to India, like, you know, I spent a lot of time in India and I dated, I dated like, I've, I've had three different guys that I dated in India within the, the <laughs> my three months. <laughs> oh, but wow. even there, the culture, the men are so different there than in Brazil, you know, because like, if, so if you're looking at the cultures, right, as an example, in India, um, sex is this taboo thing. You're not allowed to have sex before getting married. So these men that I were dating, we didn't even walk around in public holding hands. And so it was like, you know, let alone them trying to eat my face, right? Yeah. That wasn't gonna happen. <laughs> and so I remember one of them, <laughs> one guy, so uh, the three that I dated, I only had sex with one. And that one, it was like just before I left. And the poor thing, he was a virgin, never had sex before. Oh, and damn. yeah, I saw his virginity. Oh. And after that, he was just like, oh, I want to marry you. Let's come back and meet my family. And I was like, no. I'm sorry, <laughs> like, I felt bad, but it was like, it really did suck. And he was really, really small. And not that the size matters. That was what you do with it. <laughs> That's a lot. But, yeah, she lies, uh, she lies. But I was just like, no, 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 no. Yeah, after that, I didn't even want to have sex with him again. And I feel so bad. Sorry, don't don't judge me, anybody. Don't judge me. Uh, nobody's you know, judging you. I, no, I, I will correct you, though, about all that I was feeling bad. Because I'm sure at some point you were like, I got that good, you know what? I got that good mm -hmm. pussy. <laughs> <laughs> so you turned a young boy. Oh my God. Good for you. I did. Yeah. And he was he was like 23. And I was like 35, 36 at the time time. Oh, no. so. oh my God, you cradle robber. I yeah. know. Cougar. I, I like cradle robber. No, I don't like that. Cougar. Just call me cougar. It's okay. Cougar, cougar. Okay, guys. Right. So we're gonna move on to the next card. Before we go there, I just want to say hi to Carol, who always jumps in and she's a great listener. And I was on her podcast and she's so sweet. She lives in Mexico. And she just said sorry for the loss of Watif. Oh, there you go in Spanish. Un beijo y abrazos from Mexico. She's real yes, sweet. This is from Mexico. Yeah, she's really sweet. And then a <laughs> raining, <laughs> raining woman. She says eat, she changed her tune real quick about a thing. <laughs> to say. She's like eating my face when you're not invited to my face will have me never see you again. And then finally, uh, I kissed my Brasileira straight in the mouth the minute I saw her pretty advice of Brazilian homie. And you are absolutely right for doing that because I missed an opportunity with this really nice girl because she asked me to kiss her like. I I just met her like thirty minutes later. <laughs> I, I, thirty minutes, said, that's an eternity. Yeah, and I said she was like, "What do you think of kissing?" I and I just said, "Oh, well, I think it's kind of nasty that person's <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like kiss each other." And she just looked at me, and yeah, it, well, I did not close the deal. So I asked advice from a Brazilian friend of mine. He's like, no, <clears throat> just kissed her right there, like in front of the sh everybody on the street." Anyway, random cards. Best dating app, Tinder. None. <laughs> so, so going with what Craig said, hookup culture is still the new in Brazil thanks to Tinder. I think a lot of people are on Tinder here. Yeah, yeah. But language is is a big deal because um, chances are most people you meet on Tinder are not going to speak English. They will use translation apps, but. Um, yeah, the the actual date that is going to come from Tinder is not going to be good. What were you going to say, Mike? <laughs> um, where I live, it's pretty much impossible to meet anybody who speaks any English. So I already don't have that expectation. Yeah, yeah. I imagine. I'll, Even I'll... in Sao Paulo, it's hard. Really? Yeah, so I think Sao Paulo is easy to find people who speak English. I don't know. It's, it, they, they say they speak English on their profile. But yeah, they yeah, because they use translation apps. Yeah. Well, when uh, you right, look because, in person, uh, it's like, what the fuck? Yeah. You totally lied. Right. Well, you know, it's interesting because I've met people who speak English really well in Sao Paulo. Way more than I've met in Rio or, or Salvador. Oh, I'll go with that. 
but just yeah, off of sure. dating apps, I don't know. Like, but um, not off of apps, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean oh, person, yeah, yeah, picking up apps, clothes, yeah. Yeah. You yeah. know, I know people that have yeah. on their profile that say that they speak English, though, and I already know they don't. Like, I'm already, I'm, <laughs> I'm looking at yeah. them like, don't speak English. I already know it. Yeah. No, I agree with you. I'm going to give up. Oh, go, go as ahead. long as you're actually a girl, that's okay. Because yeah, there there have been a few uh, mishaps. mishaps. Yeah, oh. yeah. Yeah, Sao Paulo. There's outside of Tinder, you get those mishaps on, on Tinder too. Um, <laughs> I will give a little bit of a shout out, and Renee knows that I really like Badu because Tinder. I like Tinder, but it's a lot of those uppity kind of white upper middle class like duck face girls. In fact, somebody just said that. <laughs> duck face girls. Uh, well, yeah, no, so but it's been but in the because uh, we're, we're, we're mostly we're, we're, an like, advertisement for Instagram. Yes. That's what uh, I oh, yeah. It's, it's, like, my, it's like, here's my Tinder profile, but if you want to talk to me, come to my Instagram. You know, my, give me those so, fucking somebody likes. in the Give me a second here because I want to get Maya in. Because Maya, they were talking about this group that somebody, guys, we, uh, the, Maya and Renee and I are in this uh, expat group, and they were been talking about dating a lot for whatever reason. A bit because I think there were a few horror stories. There's a boy here from Alabama, speaking of Alabama, who had a really bad time with his Brazilian girlfriend who was violent to him and blah, blah, blah. So he left back to the US. And then the tide in the group changed a lot of talking about dating. And actually, there was another guy on the group that said his wife extorted him for a bunch of money and she did a porno. It's really wacky. It's like she did. She, that happens in Thailand yeah. a lot. Yeah. But somebody mentioned what is the best dating app. And somebody said this app called Happening. I think it's H A P P N. Oh, oh yeah. That was the worst. It was like Pete said, it was just Instagram duck faces. Did you check that app out, Maya? Happening? Um, no, I didn't check it out because I kind of just decided to go on hiatus <laughs> from dating uh, for for the moment because um, I'm doing all this construction stuff. But what? no, I have not tried Happen. I've tried Tinder. Um, I tried Brazil Cupid, which was like a little wacky to me. But the dates that I got that I would say were the best dates were either random meets in person or Facebook dating date. Mm -hmm. This However, Facebook oh, dating. Facebook dating was horrible for me. Oh my god! I feel the like people, the best. Uh, oh, no, sorry. Go ahead. I was just gonna say the people that was coming on all oh, just horrible looking. Ah. Oh. oh really? <laughs> oh, I feel like yeah. The best and worst dates that I've gotten have been from Facebook dating. Like there were some real doozies. There were some disasters for sure. I got catfished big time, you guys. Wow. Mm. Off of Facebook from some dude in, in, in Bahia. No, this dude lived outside of the state and uh -huh. he flew here, flew here to meet me and catfished. <laughs> oh God. Like, wow. Wow. Plane ticket to come here and that meet. That sounds me. like magic, <laughs> right? You guys, I was so embarrassed when I saw him at the airport. I just blurted <laughs> out "Giscopa," and that's all. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. Like I'm sorry. And I said it like three or four times because I had no idea. I just kept looking at him and thinking, like, I've definitely been catfished, and I had no idea what to do. He said he was Brad Pitt, but he showed up as Danny DeVito. <laughs> Basically. I mean, did his face look anything like the face in his picture? It looked like it could be him like <laughs> 20 years later. 20 years ago, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Lord. And I'm 45. Like, I don't have a problem dating other people who look my age, but like, just, just be honest about what you look like, is all. Yeah. Right. I get you. I get you. So I, I didn't think happening too much. It, for me, it was a lot of duck faces on there. I tr I just checked it out for show purposes, research purposes. But Renee knows this, that one that I really do like is Badu because you tend to get more varied crowd. Uh, and that includes, guys, you know, different races. You know, uh, I see Tinder is very white, nothing against white folks. But, you know, I like a nice mix. Mm -hmm. you know, I, black, I would disagree with black, that. You know, really. kind of mixed color. 
And Badu seems to have a little bit more variety if you're into that. So I've met some nice people off of Badu, and it doesn't seem to be because a lot of times when you get into these dating apps, especially if you're like in the gay world, you know, you get your grinders of the world, and it's just like, you know, we just want to meet up to fuck. But Badu seems to be like you get to actually make friends. Like I have people that I haven't dated off of Badu, but I'm still friends with, and we still talk. Um, there the are, problem with Badu is nobody actually checks in with it very much. Like that's you, the problem. You, you, send, you send a message and, and yeah. you get a reply like three months later. That's like you me. You really need to hook somebody. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and that's I, the thing was that the Tinder is mu much more active. Yes. 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 No, yeah. Tinder, I've been on a Tinder date before and it was like yeah. immediate. It's like, okay, I'll meet you tomorrow. But do takes a little bit more time and I'm not on there a lot. So sometimes if I see that I'm kind of jiving with somebody, I'll just send them my number uh, if I, you know, feel that it's a real person and blah, blah, blah. You know, obviously be careful giving out your personal info. And then we start talking out of the Badu. And then it's really nice. I've met some nice people off of Badu. So that's my favorite one out of like the 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 big ones, I guess, because Badu's got a lot of people on it too. So, all right, let's move on. Uh Oh, rainy woman says, I'm trying to get ready for bed, but we are too entertaining. We're all drunk. <laughs> uh, but we're having fun. Except for me. I wish I was. Oh, we'll get drunk. Okay. The worst. <laughs> oh, the worst time ever on a date in Brazil. Okay. I need Maya to go first because I almost brought it up in our last little card because. Yeah, she him, she, she is. She shared, she shared a really crazy story in the expat group. I don't know if you feel comfortable sharing it now, but that yeah, to me. Is yeah, totally. So I, um, this was a guy actually from Facebook dating, which I mentioned was the best and the worst dates that I've been on. And he seemed super normal at first, seemed super cool, although he did not look like his pick. His face looked like his pick. He had cropped out the rest of his body. I guess he had some quarantine accumulation of LB. <laughs> so he was a little on the heavy side is what you're saying. A little on the heavy side, which, again, I have no problem with heavy men. I just, you know, don't be weird about it is all. Um, right. You know, just look like what you look like. Don't hide it and then be like, oh, I'm way bigger than I was trying to appear. So um, everything went fine up until a certain point. And then um, he, you know, kind of went in for the, the goodnight kiss and whatever um, in the car because he had he had brought his he had come on his motorcycle and I had come in my car and he just didn't, he didn't take no for an answer, basically. Um, I was kind of like, hold on, buddy, you know, things are kind of moving along. And, you know, I'm dating right now very casually. And, you know, where are we even going to go? Like, I'm not going to have sex with you in my car. Like, you know, um, he like lived with his mom as it turned out. <laughs> and, of course. Of course. Of course, of course he did. Um sure. Like, where are we even going to go? And, like, I'm not going to a hotel with you. Like, come on. So, you know, he just was really super pushy. And the the date ended up by me with me telling him, you know, you're going to have to stop or you're going to get punched. Like, you know, and, and get <laughs> the fuck out of my car. Um, and so that was really super. And you, you drove him home, too. You drove him home and no, he, he was on a motorcycle. On you. motorcycle. Yeah. He was oh on a motorcycle. Gotten into the car to like talk for a minute and whatever. Um, oh so, yeah, but that's not where it ended. Like, he ended up messaging me just a ton of like just paragraphs and paragraphs, like after the date. And I was like, I don't whatever want to deal with this man at all. So I just messaged him and was like, hey, you know, I don't really feel like you know we're on the same page but good luck to you you know best of luck to you and again he like responded with this whole thing like i just don't understand like blah, blah, blah. for one date come on guys like yeah oh yeah for one date uh, it, totally uncalled for so i blocked him and then he went and got his mom's phone and messaged me from his mom <laughs> that's um, so sad that is so sad so, like, what 
going to change my mind at that point. I was like, you're repeatedly like disrespecting every boundary that I put out. And now I'm just going to what? Like do a complete 180 and be like, well, now that you've messaged me from your mom's phone. Yeah. So. <laughs> In, we shouldn't laugh, but it is laughable. And speaking of differences that, you know, because this in the U.S. would just be like a horrible date rape story, you know, that you survived. But here it's like it's not just the date rape story. It's I live with my mom. It's like, I don't know, boundaries. I just want to be loved and I'm lonely. And it's like, oh, needy people. That is, I didn't really answer the question. Needy, but answer. like. But very I can also add like a little uncomfortable element that I feel like is not super uncommon here is the wanting to experiment with a gringa. And um, that's a huge yeah. turn off. Like yeah. if you mention it in the day, like if that's what you want, just don't say it. Keep that to yourself, you know, because I don't want to know about that. But this guy had like kind of mentioned a couple things. He was like, you know, well, I've never been with a woman who looks like you or whatever. And I was like, okay, move past it because, you know, nobody you wants to hear that. Ain't. You still ain't been with a woman that looked like me. So, uh, Renee, you, you got something? Worst time ever on a date in Brazil? Um, yeah. Let's see. Uh -oh, so too, this is a guy. Yeah, the, the list is too long. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this, I think I told you about this, Phil. I think I told you about this one. The guy that I met on Tinder. And um, so I took him. We ended up going to, to Baja, an area here in Rio. And um, with some friends. And um, so <laughs> actually, it's kind of funny, too. Actually, so he's Muslim. And we're at my friend's house. And my friend pretends to be Muslim. <laughs> and so the guy gets all nervous and weird because as a Muslim, he's not supposed to be like holding my hands and all of this stuff, right? So dude is like staying all away from me and barely touching me the whole time. And then we, we all have dinner. Some other friends come over and there'll be like four or five of us. And I put my like I put my elbows on the table and he's like, oh, take your elbows off the table. This is rude. And I'm like, man, I'm going to be comfortable here. I'm not trying to, I, I don't know, act a certain way and be all uncomfortable. Like, who makes that? So anyway, so it's like the whole time is kind of tense, right? Because he's trying to tell me how to behave and what to do. And I'm like, these are my friends. Like, you don't even know them. Why are you worrying about what I'm doing? But anyway, so we're going home. After that, at like one o'clock, and we're going home. And at this point, like I'm, I'm just so annoyed with him, right? Because, um, you know, he's acting all weird because he thinks my friend is Muslim, who wasn't really Muslim, and it was just too funny, so I didn't tell him. Then he's trying to tell me what to do, and so I said to him, "Hey, are you still fine with take giving me a ride home from Baja to where I live? Is about maybe forty minutes." He's like, "Yeah." So we get in the car, and we're driving. Well, he's like let's go pull over someplace. And I'm like, nah, can you just take me home? Because I'm like really tired. And because I didn't really want to do anything with him. I'm like, I'm tired. Like he annoyed me and I just want to go home. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But let's stop here. And I'm like, no, I'm not stopping here. So then this is what makes, so this is what puts the icing on the cake. And I think I told you this, Phil. He stops on the side of the road. He's like, okay, well, call Uber. I'm not going to take you home. Oh, shit. Lord. Damn. Like, yeah. Story, yes. classic gentleman, right there. Right, and so I mean, at least he didn't leave me hanging. He waited in the car with me to call Uber, so I blocked him and never talked to him since. But I actually happened to see him two days ago, and did he's he like, message, "Did he message you on his mom's phone?" <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I believe he was married because oh. Oh, so Jesus this is the, other thing. the first time I met him, he had a, he had a wedding band on. And I was like, are you married? He's like, no, no, no. I use this because I'm an Uber driver and the women jump all over me and it's just to kind of keep them from attacking me. And oh, I was like, thank you for us here in Brazil, though nobody cares if you're married or not. And sometimes that makes you, even in other countries, sometimes that makes you more wanted, right? And then the next time we went on a date, he didn't have that ring on again. So I'm like, hmm. 
And then it's like even leading up to this, like we'd we talk and then sometimes, I don't know, like he would disappear or whatever. I'm like, yeah, this man is married. I'm not going out with him. So I, I'm like, I'm not doing anything with him. And um, so then I saw him like two days ago after I blocked him. And he's like, Renee, like he's yelling, Renee, hi. And I'm like, why is he so excited to see me? I blocked him. Because you wanted someone you're loving. And I'm like, Love should him. I say hello or should I like mace him because I carry mace? <laughs> should I mace him? Like, what should I do? <laughs> oh, God. I, I would, uh, but anyway, that was the worst time on a, on a date in Brazil. Now, guys, some of you may think, oh, this can happen anywhere. And some of this can happen in almost any yeah. country. I think what makes it different when you're down here is that folks don't, I, I don't know, what's a nice way to put it? Because it's really not nice. But I don't think they realize like that they're doing something that culturally would be wrong. Like they're just like, well, that's just how it's supposed to be. Whereas in the U.S., okay, if you get a guy that wants to take advantage of you or a girl, because that happens too. Um, they're kind of going out with knowing, okay, I'm about to do some real nasty shit to somebody. And, you know, if you call them out on it, you, you know, like that, what's that movie? Uh, pretty young female or something that we watched. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Promising young woman. Yeah. Promising young woman. Uh, you might, you know, they may wake up to the fact of like, yeah, you're doing something that is either a illegal or two completely out of line. Whereas here, I don't think the guy that did that to me realizes that dude you just tried to date rape this woman you know because he's calling her on his fucking mama's phone so it's yeah. like they don't you know Please. that's where you got to kind of be more careful here i think especially if you're a woman of knowing that these the dudes down here like think anything that you know from a first world country you know whether it's england or ireland or germany or france or us or canada you know, as far as women's rights, women revolution, women being able to be independent. When you get to Brazil, take that clock back 50 years or more because that's where it's at. You know, I mean, there's been a lot of progress since I've been here uh, in the 10 years I've been here, not just for blacks, but for gay, uh, women, but for blacks and gays too. But it's still behind. And that's where you got to be extra careful. Um, I just want to mention here, Ron Nell. He mentioned that, uh, Mia, because you had said the guy, he was just kind of curious what it's like to be with an American woman. And I've had this experience, so I like that he said that. Because he said, that's been my experience with men as well. White men wanting to experiment with a black man, usually using some unflattering, which they think is flattering terminology. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an example uh, where somebody's like, Oh, que negro bonito. Like, what a beautiful black man. Eu, eu, nunca, eu, eu, eu nunca fiquei com negro antes. Eu sempre... Eu tenho tanto, I'm speaking in Portuguese here. Uh, I've never been with a black guy before. Oh, it's probably so much better. It's this. It's like, it's not flattering when you say that to uh, yeah. a black person. It really isn't. So there's a lack of cultural sensitivity in Brazil and social sensitivity, which mm -hmm. is jarring, you know, and you notice yeah. it when you get here and you just gotta be aware of it. And I just, I say, like, I, I don't mince words. And I'm like, yeah, and you're still not, you know, if somebody says that, oh, what a beautiful black guy, they, or some, they'll say some bullshit like that, uh, like so savage or so exotic. Yeah, they, uh, acordo pecado. I'm sure Renee's heard that phrase before, the, mm -hmm. the color of sin, you know, like the dark skin. And I'm like, yeah, and you're still not going to, you know, um, which is why I tend to stay away from Tinder because it, you get a lot of those types on Tinder. Um, but just to finish up here with Ronel, he said he moved to Rio yesterday and he's not even get on, he's not even going to get onto those dating apps for those reasons. And I don't think Ronel needs to. He's a good looking young man here. He's a uh, yeah, and, uh, and let me say, I just met him today. I met Ronel today. We went, we had some seafood. We did a lunch dinner, yeah, you know. so that was nice. Renee, are you cheating on me? I would never. I know we are in Brazil and cheating is like a sport, but come on. Come I would on. never, I'd love you to the yeah. So Renee, <laughs> you will be fine. You will be fine, stay away from those apps. Um, let's move ahead. Here's a question for all you. What makes an intercultural relationship work? Actually, Maya had brought that up. So you got any 
Uh, on that because she had actually brought that up as a possible question for the night. I think she brought that up because she didn't hear what people had to say. Yeah, I, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? I'm gonna say if I had the answer, I'd be in a relationship right now. <laughs> exactly, exactly. We're like the worst people to be talking about this question, right? Um, you know, I, I, no, I was I, in an, I, I was look, in an intercultural relationship in Thailand for for six months and. It was, it was really good, but she was abusive. She was violent. She put me in the hospital. And all I really left that relationship with was a concussion and this question. Okay, I'm going to attempt to answer it only because I was in a really long relationship here in Brazil. I think it lasted five or six years. I'm still friends with him. The only reason we broke up is because he moved to Ireland. You know, he's in Portugal, and but we're still friends. I still talk to him, but I, it wasn't a bad breakup at all. So what made it work? And I was in a couple before that, too. That lasted about a year or so. So what I think made it work, one, you got to know to speak the language a little bit. You got to catch the nuance of the language. Um, actually, the, the last guy I was with, the one, the beautiful butt guy that Renee saw for a flash, that was our biggest fights were based on that. He thought that I was way too direct when I said stuff. And Portuguese is a language that uh, is not very direct. So, like, it's subtle. Quick, it's very subtle. Very subtle. I'll give you a quick example. Like, I was here, my little brother was in the other room, he was here, and I wanted to order a pizza. So, I said what I thought was very natural. I was like, guys, I'm going to order a pizza. I'm going to get half margarita and you guys choose what you want. Cause I don't like Brazilian pizza that much. Margarita, I can deal with. He got so offended by this because in Portuguese, it sounded like I was commanding him. He like, this is what we're getting. I'm getting half this and you guys get half that. No questions asked, blah, blah, blah. So I was like, what? I thought I was in the twilight zone. And I realized too that since my breakup was around like 2015, I joined more of the expat community and I got more into like how I naturally communicate with people. And I had forgotten how to communicate with Brazilians because before that I wasn't at all connected to the expat community. I was very much immersed in the Brazilian culture. And I think I knew how to do it a little bit better, like communicate. So that's one thing you got to learn. And if not the language, then at least the nuances of how people say things, how people ask for things. And then with this uh, guy that I was with for the longest time that I'm still friends with, when he started getting into his Brazilianisms, which were jealous if I picked up the phone, because I met him. When I met him, I met somebody else at exactly the same time. And I really liked both people. One of them was actually a trans woman, a trans girl, whatever. Um, and I was confused, like, which way do I go? And then I decided to go with him. But the, the trans girl, she still called me every once in a while. And I had to tell her, look, I'm in a relationship. She would get super jealous to the point where I was walking down Avenida Paulista, the main strip in Sao Paulo, and I threw my phone on the ground. Like, I just, people thought I was nuts. And I was, I just, bah! I was that angry. And then I sat him down, and I think this is this is, goes back to Renee and what she's helped me so much with, is before the relationship starts, realize we are from different cultures. This is where I'm coming from. That's where you're coming from. This is what I may say, which you may take offense to, but really it's not offensive, and I, I apologize. Like, you've got to have that conversation beforehand and realizing we're not just going to be boyfriend and girlfriend or whatever mix of relationship uh just because we're so happy together no you're coming from very different cultures they seem very similar at face value but once you start digging in they are different so i sat him down after like three weeks or maybe a month of like fighting every day and i'm not an argumentative person argumentative uh person argumentative yeah, it's argumentative. argumentative. I didn't write the first time um and so i sat him down and i said look I don't want to get, I don't want to be fighting you every day about bullshit. I wouldn't, if, if I didn't really like you and didn't want to be with you, you wouldn't be here right now. And you got to decide if you're going to be the jealous boy or if you're going to be mature and be with me. 
what do you want to do? And he decided to man up, you know, and be mature. And we had a flourishing relationship after that. Really wonderful. Yeah, there were things that sometimes I'm like, what the fuck? And I'm sure there was stuff that I did that he was like, what the fuck? But it starts with that first meeting when you realize this is the person. We are, it's like, you're from the planet Klingon and you're from the planet Vulcan. I'm a Trekkie, okay? And it's like, okay. we're not going to mix, okay? Uh, but we can. Like, how can we make ourselves mix? So that's my my advice because it worked. You know, I, I was in a really loving and long relationship and I'm still uh, friends with him. We actually, for the longest time, we were having a long distance relationship to the point, like we were so connected that I met a girl here in Sao Paulo that I really fell for like 100%. Actually, Elisa, that was at the memorial, I went with this girl to see Elisa play and she was gorgeous and sweet and because I was still with this boy, I let her go. I was like, no, I, I, I still am like in this relationship, even though we are not together physically. So it was really strong, it was a strong bond. And, but it started with that. It was like, dude, I can't do this. And that's what didn't work with this, the, the beautiful butt dude. It's like, I tried to have the conversation with him. I had it once, we got in another argument about me and communication tried it twice i'm like i'm not going for the third time like if you didn't get it the first didn't get it the second like maya angelo says if somebody shows you who they are believe them like that's who he was yeah. he was get it this is who i am i'm doing my best it's not gonna work so that would be my advice for interrelation intercultural relationships I have not had these problems in Brazil. I had them much more in Thailand and China. In Brazil, I find like the most, the thing that makes an intercultural relationship work the most is just having something in common. Um, in Asia, I did not find that that was often enough. But in Brazil, I think, I think because the cultures are, are closer. Um, it, mm -hmm. it, it is uh, actually often enough. Like, there is not that much difference between Brazilian culture and American culture, Canadian culture, English culture, or whatever. In Asia, it's actually a lot harder. So I don't think cultural differences are the biggest impediment to relationships here. Yeah, but Pete, you and I, we've had the benefit of living in a big city like Sao Paulo in the metropolitan area. There's a way more influence. They get way more influenced by outside cultures. Uh, if you're going closer to like where Renee is, even Rio, like, you know, it's not that far right. north, but it's north enough where you start to get a whole different Brazil. I mean, and then you start going into Bahia and these other yeah. places. And then it's like that's true. That's true. I've lived in like Jinja, a whole so, other country. Yeah. I've you know, had my small town experiences. Yeah. No. Here it's a, it's a whole different animal. Uh, you know, girl, I, I want to also add as well, like really just the communication, really just kind of making sure that you're you're listening because things can get but, lost in translation. Well, that can happen with 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 people from the same country, though. <laughs> I know, but even more here, literally lost in translation. Yeah. Literally lost in translation. Uh, Craig Washington, brother Craig. Oh, I got it. We got to chill, Craig. I think now he's back in Sao Paulo. Infinite patience and an open mind is needed. And that is 100% true. Is 100% true. Because it's the little things that you don't expect. That's what drives you nuts. You know, you think. Oh, our cultures are close enough where we can get along and then you realize, oh, actually, no. Um, let's move along. Something that turns you off immediately in a possible <laughs> conquest. Having my face uh, eaten off? Yeah. Send me me her Instagram link. Yeah. Me, uh, Maya? Something if that he's turns bossy. Off if what he's bossy, it? I can't deal with him. If he's bossy, you can't deal with it. Yeah, 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 yes. yes. Um, for me, oh my God. I think the kissing thing, like getting too hot and heavy, like, in, oh no, I'm sorry, no, I take it back. Because I've kind of gotten in the groove of that. 
the opposite. Like I was on this little app and I was just talking in motherfuckers. And then I did the dumbest thing, which I, I said, oh, let's talk on WhatsApp. Cause you know, we can talk more in private. Oh, my amor, my love. Oh, this. I'm like, oh, oh my God. Oh, they, they do that in Salvador so much. El so apasionado para vos. Yes. Oh, my God. And I'm it's like, you don't even know me. <laughs> exactly. No, I blocked him. I was like, no, I don't want to be anybody's amor. Sorry about that. Move on. Right. And then, you know, when you're on Tinder or something, um, they ask you for your WhatsApp, but I'm always like, mm, I'm not going to really, I don't really want to give you the WhatsApp, but then you give it to them. And then what do they do? They send a dick pic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, okay, that's why they want to give my WhatsApp. <laughs> Maya, do you get, do they you don't get ask, they just send it. Do you get unsolicited penises? I do. I get unsolicited penises and it's... Wow really believe that it's so much different from American dick that you know I don't sometimes That's I don't know funny. what to say because it's like it's not it's uh, penises by and large are not that I mean I'm saying this as a nurse too I suppose as well as <laughs> like the last 30 years there's not that much difference in penises like I've never seen a single one and been like oh my god this is like crazy I have. <laughs> do, you know, do, you, do you actually like critique them? Like, if someone sends you a dick pic, do you are you like, well, this is like a six out of ten compared to other? Oh, let, let me tell you. Oh, I'm so sorry to interrupt, but someone sent yeah, me a dick right. pic, and it was the nastiest pic. Like, I almost vomited. I think it's <laughs> it was like, and, yeah. and 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 let me tell you, I, I've seen a lot of dicks too because I give tantric massage, right? So you know, I see a lot. lot of I've seen a lot. Thing. I've seen a lot of penises and vaginas because I do massages on both men and women. Um, but they're not all the same. And when this guy sent me this, like I swear, it kind of looked like a horse, like the like the <laughs> horse's neck, and it just had that hooked to the side oh, and then God. it was like the skin and the flesh kind of like really loosening it was just gross and i was i was just so mad at him for sending that and it was like you know we had talked for for quite some time before he sent that so i think if it would have looked beautiful i would have been like oh hey yes but it was so nasty i blocked him right away <laughs> <laughs> yes. and we were planning to see each other and everything and i was just like oh well, at least we got that out of the way. I actually, I mean, I have solicited dick pics for that reason because it's like I'm not traveling halfway across the city to meet Mr. Winky, you know, like Pinky Toe. Um, so it's good to have a little bit of that if you're just trying to get down the business. And that's the cool thing about in Brazil, it's a little bit more open if you actually want solicited pictures. People are more open about it, but the, it sucks when you. And another thing that happens too with me is on some of these apps, they're like, oh, do you want to do a shamada, like a call? And I'm a very verbal person. It's like, I like having a nice hot conversation and these guys have no imagination. And then they just turn on their camera and it's like a penis. And I'm like, right. I, I was turned on before I was getting excited. Like, oh, you're kind of cute. You're talking this, you're talking a little smack. And then you turn on the camera just to show yourself jerking off. I'm like, how is that a turn on? So yeah, lack right. of imagination with some of these, um, with these dudes. Um, girls and boys, we're gonna ask another question here. A little positive question, because we've been ragging on these people. The biggest cultural difference that you like is dating. What do you like? What's something that you enjoy? about dating in Brazil? I it goes like back to point. something. No, go ahead, Brene. I, I think Mia. Maya. Oh, Maya, 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 yeah. I feel like men here are way more earnest with regard to how much fun they try to provide on the date. Like, even if they are broke as fuck and have no way to take yeah. you out for night, they do not let that stop them. Like, they're still gonna find, like, an amazing beach to take you to. Uh, they're going to come up with some kind of way to take you on a nice, um, a nice noteworthy date. 
What's a date? Well, <laughs> I mean, I haven't been on one in so long. I forget what it's like here. <laughs> I lie. I lie. I have been on a nice date. I have. You I have my last, that too, last bro. guy I dated. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah, we had a lot of nice dates. Yeah. I feel like dates for me have almost always been with, first of all, I always end up dating guys who are broke. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what that is, but. We could probably get into some psychology on that. But there are always a lot of beach dates for me. And I think those are wonderful because the guy doesn't have to be like, oh, I'm too broke for this or you yeah. know, whatever. That. And it's beautiful and it's romantic. That's nice. That's nice. And then Bahia is like the beach state, isn't it? Like that's. Oh, like it's that's gorgeous. The There's so many yeah. And that's yeah. very similar, similar with Rio as well. Like, a lot of my first dates are going to the beach. You know, and that's why I jokingly say, what's a date? Because it's like, you know, to do the traditional dating like you do in the US or something where you go to a restaurant and all of that. Now that is more common in Sao Paulo. I remember when the first time I went on a date in Sao Paulo, I was like, whoa, he opened the car door for me. He actually had a car. And, you know, cause like in, when I lived in Salvador and now in Rio, like most of the guys I know don't have a car. So, you know, it was just so interesting to see that. But I love, you know, I just, I love the, you know, there's just so much about like with the Brazilian day, like the way the men, when they look at you, the attention that they give you, the, the jeito brasileiro to talk to you. It just makes, for me, it makes me feel like a woman, right? It just, they know how to really. You made me feel. Like a you natural woman. You. <laughs> you know, I will say that the one serious relationship that I've been in since I've been here, the guy, I, so I met him. This was not through an app. This was like an in-person, like an event that I went to and I met this guy. And we somehow agreed to go on this date. I don't remember if he just asked or what happened, but um, he was actually late to the date and I almost got up and left. Uh, because yeah. I, hate, I hate people being late, but yes, I didn't yes. doubt like, he arrived. He arrived to the date, and he was like stressed out and sweaty. And I was like, I had thought he was driving to this date, and I found out that he had taken the bus for like an hour to get to this date. <laughs> and I was already like, well, love on his heart. Like he's already made this effort, you know. And that was very endearing, and I liked that. That is endearing. That is. Uh, Ronell asks here, because we're kind of talking about that, how do the differences in economic status play out, if there is one? There's definitely one. Um, my experiences have been I, that I do like. Like one of the things that I enjoy about dating in Brazil is that you don't have to do, like go all out on the first date. Like people are willing to just go to the park, to just sit in a little bar, like we call them here, the like, little corner bar or something. And they're not going to judge you for that. Like later, okay, you can go to a nice wine bar or go see a movie. But folks are willing to accept a date that's just, let's just hang out, which I really like. I mean, it can yeah. get a little bit, you know, going to what Ronel was asking. When they do find out that you're a gringo or, <clears throat> or things like that, then they it can happen that folks are like, oh, yeah, well, let's go to a movie. Whereas before you were just sitting home watching Netflix. Mm -hmm. uh, they think you're filled with cash. That's annoying. But that's something that I think would happen in any developing country. If people yeah. see you are possible, uh, you know, cash train or whatever you call it, a money train, they're going to latch on to you. And then, but you weed those people out quick. Like you, you realize folks that are like that or not. Like I just met this guy I was kind of dating, um, although he kind of, he didn't ghost me, but he kind of just disappeared for a bit, but he just sent me a message now, actually. Um, but I, what I liked about him is that sometimes I would offer to like do something a little bit extra. And he's like, no, let's just stay home and watch the X-Files <laughs> or let's just stay home and, uh, and make something Good to eat. Man. Good man. Yeah, and I was like, I appreciated that. That's why I was kind of upset that he kind of walked out a little bit. Uh, that's a whole nother topic, the ghosting and the love you one minute, the next minute I'm like, 
you know, I, I'm not sure if I'm well, ready. I think that's uh, actually really relevant. Yes, uh, but just just to answer Rona real quick, economic status do play out. If I were you, I mean, it's difficult. I can I can kind of disguise myself a little bit more because I was born here. I speak really good Portuguese. I went to the U.S. when I was seven. So, se eu falar português com você, começar a fazer uma conversa e falar de like, I barely have an accent. I pretty much can just roll out my Portuguese. So I can play it out like I'm a Brazilian trying to meet another Brazilian. The problem comes when they find out I'm not exactly, you know, like uh, that's not the whole story. And then sometimes things can change and that's frustrating. So I've taken right. to not bringing up, like when people ask me what I do for work, I say, ah, like I do a lot of things. Like I don't say anything because then they try to put you on a status like, oh, you teach English? Yeah. Well, well mm. English teachers usually charge X amount per hour. So, hmm, like this guy's got a yeah. little bit. And it's like, no, I'm poor. You know? You know uh, yeah. Yeah. That's, I, that's a really I, I, good point. Go ahead. Let Maya go. No, yeah, Maya go. Um, so when I moved here, I would try to, because this is how I was raised, I would try to make a good impression on people thinking that I was like, you know, um, seeming respectable or whatever. And people would ask me, what do you do for a living? And I would say, well, I'm a nurse, but I work remotely for uh, an American company doing utilization review. And they would immediately like, some people at least, would just immediately like see dollar signs. Yes. And yeah. I learned that really the hard way. Um, because as an American, when you meet other Americans, if the first thing that you say when people ask what you do is like, I don't work that much or I'm broke or something like that, nobody wants to be friends with you. Right. You know, yeah. so I didn't want to come off like, you know, that, hey, I'm the new person in town and like I'm a loser. So I would try to paint myself in the best possible light. But really what I was doing was like fucking myself you know, for, for other people I, to be like, oh, I see this, like, rich foreigner who's clueless. Yes, that is mm -hmm. a good part. That is yeah. a bad part. You got to know how to, like, balance it where, because I was raised the same way. It's like, I meet somebody, man, I want to give that person the best first date or the best first impression of me possible. And I realized real quick, no, you don't. So if the first date is like, let's go to a little hookah bar, you know, and just smoke some nargili, you know, and yeah. enjoy the night, that's a perfect date, you know, where we're only spending 20 reais or 30 reais. That's the perfect date. Not, oh, let's go to this really fancy restaurant that I love downtown. No, 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 no. That does not work. Yeah, I, I found some of my best cross-cultural relationships, and this actually includes Brazil for a change. Um, were the ones where I was just poor and pathetic. Like, because when when you were in that state, when like you have nothing and somebody just likes you for who you are, like they think, <laughs> I mean, first of all, like why would somebody like you when, when you have this foreign status and you, you still have no money mysteriously? But this is what happened to us, you know, a few years ago. It was bad. Uh, you know, we were all fucking broke. And I, I found that actually the truest intercultural relationships that I had, both in Brazil and Thailand, were ones where I had nothing to offer. Because those are the ones I could trust. And, and mm -hmm. they were they were the ones where people were not looking for something from me. You know, if anything, it was, it was kind of weird. It was <laughs> like they, they were looking to take care of me, which is probably why things didn't work out. But, you know, because they got better and moved on. But um, the, the aspect of that was that um, I had this, this status that didn't really exist. And I knew that people weren't after me because of money that I didn't have. You know, like it was true. I feel you. I'm on that level. I'm on that level down here. Is that all right if we move ahead? We're almost finished yeah. here. Cards. 
All right. Could you see yourself in a long-term relationship with a Brazilian? Yes or no? I mean, yeah. I have, so I definitely could. Yeah, I could. Maya? I go back and forth on this one. Um, for the most part, yes. Occasionally, I have, like, some really pissed off, nasty, raw moods where, like, some things have mm -hmm. gone on that I haven't liked, and I've been like, no, it's never going to be with a Brazilian. But on the whole, I would say that, yes, I could see myself depending on the person. I, I, yeah, I'm with that. It's like, well, that goes back to what a uh, reigning woman said at the start, that men and women generally are the same. Of course, you've got to deal with the cultural differences, but if you find the right person, that just jives with you. I mean, it is what it is. And you learn. You do. Like I, the, the Brazilian relationship I was in, both of them actually, because I was in one for like about two years and then another one for longer that I spoke on. I learned so much about just loosening up, speak, going back to Watif, you know, and maybe what uh, Renee said, his wife kind of helped him with loosening up a little bit, enjoy, because I was so stiff all the time. And so this and that and the third, it's like, just loosen up, enjoy life a little bit. So there's things that you can definitely garner from being in a real tight relationship with a Brazilian. Um, do you think being a foreigner is a plus or a hindrance when dating Brazilians? We kind of touched on this like right now <laughs> a little bit. Um, what do you think? Where does the balance go, Renee? Is it more hindrance or more plus being a foreigner? See, that now that's a hard question. Because yeah, even kind absolutely. of like what people were saying earlier, right? There are just times where it's like, how do you know if they're just trying to date you for to get to the US or yes. because they think you have money? Mm -hmm. You know? Um, so that 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 that's hard. Sometimes I think it it can be a hindrance, and it may also be my stuff as as well at times where I'm like, okay, how do I know that this person really likes me for me? Mm -hmm. yeah. And not for what they think I have or where I could take them. I think it works better in small towns. And I also think it works better if you're not particularly successful. <laughs> it, it's actually, it, like, no, I'm serious. Being a mm -hmm. loser is actually a very successful foreign dating strategy. Because <laughs> if, if you're a loser, you know that nobody is dating you for your status. Right. We got you. We got you. Uh, Maya, what do you think on this? More, uh, where does the, 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 the balance swing here? More hindrance or more plus being a foreigner? Well, I think kind of to, to riff on what Renee was saying, there's, uh, to me, there's also the concern that maybe this person is just dating you so that they can introduce you around to their friends is like, oh, look at my American girlfriend. Yes. You know? Yeah. Or their friends, whatever. Um, and I feel like that's a little more pervasive than like they want to get to the U.S. Um, necessarily or something like that big. Sometimes it's like a much smaller scaled down version of like. Yeah, it's a status thing. It's a status thing. Uh, all right, guys, I I'm, I'm going to do lightning around here because I don't want to be on all night. And especially because somebody just came on called Cody. And Cody was the guy that was going through this really rough time with his. I, I'm going to let him give his story real quick. Cody, because we we're not gonna we can't be on all night, but we're gonna do lightning round real quick with these last two cards. There's two cards left, and then we'll have Cody on for a couple minutes to tell his story, which is really insane. And I hope he's doing well. So I actually want to check in and see if he's okay. And then we gotta put uh, Maya through the ringer. So there's, <laughs> Maya, a amazing. there's a lot coming, guys. We had a big show today, big, big show. So I hope y'all can stick around. Uh, and that includes the people that are on the broadcast. Uh, things to worry that worry you when getting in the Brazilian dating game. I think pretty much what we just said. <laughs> Do they like you? Yeah. Me? Yeah. Yeah. Being like for who you are. Yeah. Uh, getting heartbroken that. because, you know, men are, like Renee was saying, men are out here and they'll tell you today that they, that you're the love of their life. And then two days from now they've moved on and you have no idea why. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. The hardest thing for me actually was um, the way that things end like instantly. Yeah. Being ghosted. Yeah. Um, 
like there's not like normally my experience in even in Asia and North America is that when you end a relationship, you at least do the person the courtesy of sitting down and talking about why that relationship has ended. Whereas in Brazil, all of a sudden it's like, holy fuck, I'm like blocked on like all levels. Like, why didn't somebody actually take the time to sit down and say, look, this is why. And it's just, I, I think it's the Brazilian culture of convenience. It's like, eh, I'm not doing this anymore. So in the garbage and I have all the technology to do that. So closed. That is a weird thing. And that's exactly what just happened to me. And I was, I mean, I had a whole lot of things happen to me in the last two months. And that was one of them. And Renee knows, I keep saying Renee knows because me and her are married. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. but I left a lot of WhatsApp groups. I left because I was going through a little bit of a breakdown. I was like going insane. And that was one of the things. It wasn't the main thing, but it was just this wonderful guy that I met. We had a good time together. We have very open relationship uh that you know i've been much more upfront about kind of explaining what i want what i don't want we watch the x files together um and then he just he didn't ghost me completely but he just kind of made it was like less available you know and i was like yeah angry with each other it was just like before we would call each other and be on the phone for an hour or so and then it was just like hi how are you i'm fine and you great and that's it. It's like one, like forced conversations. Like, what happened? You know, and it's like it's yeah, it's weird. That happens a lot here. Either that or just plain out ghosting. In the last card, before we get Cody in for just a second, best dating experience. Oh, we ended on a high note. Best dating experience. Oh, damn. Okay. Real quick, what's your best dating experience, Renee? Okay, so mine, my most recently, the guy that I met on Tinder. Um, yeah, it was like really click. We really, we just gelled. Um, we we started talking and we just online from Tinder, we talked all day. Then we moved over to WhatsApp, talk all day. We went on our first date, it was on a Sunday and it was like a 10 hour date and he was very respectful. We had great conversation. And then we traveled for 10 days to Padachi. And it was just like, it was just like it extended that date and it was just beautiful. Beautiful. We did boat rides, went to various restaurants. It was just amazing. I'm going to cry thinking about it. No, that it sounds beautiful. Man, he was one good looking young man. Oh, he was fine. Oh, he is fine. Yes. Later, you got to tell me what happened. Uh, we'll okay. leave that off the air. Uh, Maya, best dating experience? Best dating experience. So, this was a best date for me, not for him. Um, so, I met. <laughs> guy on tinder and it was after i had broken up with um the one serious relationship that i've had here and i was torn up you guys i was not in a good way and i decided to like try to get back on the horse or whatever so i met this man on tinder he seemed really awesome we arranged a date i went over with a bottle of wine had a couple glasses of wine and i ended up having a panic attack and crying and talking about my ex-boyfriend <laughs> <laughs> oh no! And that was your best date. That's yeah, best he was, for her, she said, not for him. Not for yeah. him. He was so nice to me and like gave me a massage and like we ended up having sex, obviously, because you know it was very comforting and he was very nice to me. Um, but I was, t you know, the whole time he knew that like I was on this like ex, you know, boyfriend, and he was totally fine with it. He was very accepting, and we're still friends to this day. That's uh, nice. We, that's that's beautiful. beautiful. And Pete, you got a best date experience? I do, and it's a fucked up one, and it's uh, <laughs> it's one actually that on our first podcast we shared that photo of me and. Uh, Paulo Cavallo from Velas Virgins. Yes. Uh, when we were talking about carnival. And yeah, I met this girl that night and I wound up dating her for like the better part of a year. And I met her at that show. And um, about two months later, it was actually Easter. It was it was Easter, Good Friday. 
um, we went out to a club on Lower Augusta called Oats, which has the these depraved open bar specials. It's just like drink the fuck your face off. Like it's, it's amazing. <laughs> and and they had these um, these rock DJs playing like the Ramones, the New York Dolls. Like we just rocked the fuck out. And we left at about six in the morning because that's when the show finishes. And um, we both live basically in the same neighborhood. Like, you know where I used to live. And mm -hmm. she lived in Villa Sonia. So we both had to go to uh, Metro Butanta. And uh, we got there. We got out. And it was like six in the morning. The sun was coming up on Saturday, Easter weekend. And she's like, I don't want to go home. I just, I just want to stay out and party. And I was like, fucking hell, man. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm good with that. So there were no bars open because it was the holiday weekend. So we went to a gas station and we bought like, I don't know, like 10 cans of beer. And we just sat on a street corner drinking beer for, I don't know, two, three hours. And then we ran out of beer and I was like, well, I'm going to go home because I got vodka at home. And she's like, can I come with you? And I was like, oh, fuck yeah, man. And <laughs> yeah, she, she came back to my place, introduced her to all my roommates. I had the coolest roommates at the time. Um, I was living with two Colombians. Um, they all really loved her. And, um, you know, I had that nice sun deck at that place, too. So I was like, fuck, let's take it out on the sun deck. Because now it's like two in, the, 2 in the afternoon. Like our date started at 10 the previous evening. And I was like, all right, let's let's go out to the sun deck. And she started telling me all this fucked up shit. Like how she was adopted and, um, you know, her mother like tried to kill her when she was a baby. And that's why she was adopted. Wow. And, and she had like serious self-esteem issues and shit and I was I don't know you you know me Phil I, I have a thing for damaged girls I'm just <laughs> like <laughs> I'm just like oh my god you poor thing you poor thing and yeah it it totally worked the nasty happened and all that shit and the, the weird thing is like we actually we slept for about two hours and then she's like, my friends are having a cocaine party tonight. Do you want to go? And I was <laughs> like, fuck yeah. So this this date actually lasted for about three days. Um, and we, we, we had a long-term thing. But, you know, in the end, it didn't work out. But that one date, that Easter weekend, it was like the greatest Easter ever. There you go. There you go. Well, I'm going to be real quick, and then I'm going to let Cody tell his story real quick. Uh, my best was going down to a little beach town that they have here called – what the fuck is it called? No, I just went blank. Close to Guarujá. Um, in any case, any case, it was the first time that I felt in love enough, quote on air quotes, you know, to actually – want to do that with somebody and like go outside, spend a little cash, uh, have this really good time uh, in this other little town. And it was wonderful. It was like a, a nice, I mean, I was already with the person, but it was still a date. Um, so that was probably my favorite uh, date. Uh, but I completely forgot the name of the little town. It starts with a B and I completely forgot it. But anyway, real quick, Cody. Cause hey, can you hear me? Now we can hear Mr. Cody. So Cody okay. is from the Worldwide Expats Group. He had a little bit of trauma down here with his uh, relationship. Tell us, give us the, the the short version. Although Cody, once you get settled back in in the U.S., please, I want you to come on the show and tell us about living in a Brazilian favela and your experiences with that. Like I've actually asked you about that before. So now that you're going to be more settled down, you're more than free to come on. Yeah, I'd, I'd really like to. Yeah, Anytime. yeah, but go ahead, go ahead. What you want my story or? Yes, and by the way, it's very yeah. short. Sorry. Okay, yeah. so my story is uh, I'm from Alabama originally. I uh, what's I up, man? Do what? 
Uh, my, <laughs> Mia's from Alabama as well. Yeah, but Sorry, I, 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 I'm originally from Alabama, and I, uh, I don't know. One day, I decided like I gotta get the fuck out of here, so I traveled to New York, and I met some Brazilians. And long story short, I ended up coming to Brazil like five, six years ago, and on and off. And now I'm here, but I bought a ticket for the 15th so in like one week i'm gone for a while at least so yeah it's, but it's in the meanwhile in the meanwhile you met like the loveliest girl ever on planet earth i thought so yeah but i was mistaken <laughs> and why is that why yeah. because uh dude i can deal with anything but like if somebody's gonna be physically violent it's just oh dude i mean dude. that's just like, especially if it was a man, I would have done something. But being a woman, it's like, it's ridiculous. I, I have been there. I have been there, Cody. And I empathize with you completely. Yeah. Uh, nice, uh, difficult my, my girlfriend in Thailand was insanely violent. Um, she put me in the hospital, actually. Um, broke a <laughs> coffee cup over my head. And yeah, oh that was... Yeah. That was not pleasant. And I understand the feeling because, like, what you're saying is, like, you know, if a dude was doing this to you, even if he's your best friend, like, yeah, even if Phil hit me, I mean, I, <laughs> I'd still punch him in the fucking mouth, right? But, yeah. you know, when it's your girlfriend, like, oh, you, you can't do it. I did, actually. I did punch her in the mouth. And that's not the proudest moment of my life. But I had to do it because she was literally trying to kill me. So, dude, you're not alone, man. Like, this shit happens to a lot of dudes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And 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 I have to say, you know, no one should be violent. But if a woman is going to hit a man, she should be able to take and hit back. If she's yeah. going to hit you, she should be prepared for you to hit back. Because, I mean, you just, you, you, ha you have to also be able to defend yourself. Yeah, that's that's what I think too. But I mean, not really because I don't know. I just let her do it, and she, I haven't done anything. The worst thing I've done is shove her to the ground, like get away from me type stuff. But yeah, it's been uh fucked up. Besides that, I love Brazil. But yeah, I married no. the wrong person for sure. That's no, definitely the wrong person. No. You're no, out of. Cody, I've I've been there. Like I'm I'm serious, brother. Like if you want to stay on after the air and you want to talk about this shit, like I will I will be happy to help you because like I I have post traumatic stress disorder from my relationship in Thailand, and mm -hmm. it's not something that's been easy to get over. I think I have finally, but it's taken like ten years, and I don't want you to take ten years, brother. Like, I can hook you guys up. I can hook you guys up uh, via Facebook. Cody's a real nice dude, though. And I was shocked when I was, you know, when he started posting this stuff in our expat group. But now I'm glad you came on because we've been talking about dating. We've had some good experiences, some bad experiences. But the thing that's most important, guys, is you're out here in another land and there are folks out there okay there are plenty of expat groups you gotta have your expat community with you for moments like this i'm 100 percent one of those people that promote if you're in a country immerse yourself don't act like the the german in brazil no like you're in brazil try to immerse yourself in the culture find out as much as you can about the culture um but have that safety net because you're still in somebody else's house and when you get in situations like this, you want to have that safety net. So Cody opened up to us in the expat group. Almost pretty much everyone really gave him a, uh, some support, offered places to stay, even money to get out of the country. And that you need that network. And also you need to be able to speak up, guys, men and women. If you're in any type of abusive relationship and it can get there real quick when you're in another country because they feel like, oh, She's alone or he's alone. He doesn't have anybody here looking out for him. So let me take advantage of this mm -hmm. situation. You need to have these people out there that you can call on and be like, I need to get out of this like now. And that's another thing about Brazil. 
in, in some places of Brazil, you're going to feel like, well, I'm, this is almost first world. I mean, if you're in on Avenida Paulista or something, you're like, Brazil isn't that far from, you know, maybe like 20 years behind like New York or whatever, but it's still a developing nation. It's still almost, you know, it's like it flits between third world and first world. And why am I saying that? Because shit can happen to you quickly here. You can disappear. Like, I know I'm being real uh, mm -hmm. uh, intense no, with No, no, you, you have that friend who disappeared. It's the app. Yes, yes. Ooh, that's a terrible story. Yeah, uh, but it's a, <laughs> it's a real deal, okay? Like, if you're in any relationship that you see somebody starting to get violent, starting to get, like Mia said, too bossy, you get those warning signs. That's another thing. Like you get the warning signs when this is not the right person. Sometimes you don't, mm -hmm. but most of the time you do. And um, if you see that it's going in that direction, get out as quickly as possible. Save yourself because just because you're a foreigner, don't think that that's going to buy you like the get out of jail card. Like you, people can disappear here. Things really bad things can happen, or. You know, if somebody goes to the, the police on your ass, you know, especially if it's a woman in, in Cody's case, they're going to believe her and um, way over the man down here. So mm -hmm. there's a lot. There's a lot. So, um, Cody, we're going to have you back on. Like, the only reason I'm being kind of short with you is because we, you know, we're at the two hour mark already. And I know some of us need to wake up early and we still have mm -hmm. one more segment. But, well, you got my info. So when you're good. Actually, if you want to come on like in the next podcast, you're more than welcome. It'll be on in like two weeks, unless I'm traveling. Um, yeah, feel free, like and then we'll just go long form with you and talk about your experiences here living in the favela, your relationships and everything. I, I lived in the favela too. I, I feel like Cody's a brother. He has uh, an abusive girlfriend. He lived in a favela. Shit, that's my life. The Dodge chair, didn't you? Oh, I do know my little uh, cousin's from there. It's a rough area. Uh, okay. And that's I, why I lived in, in, North I lived in Favela Salimo for a while. Yeah, Salimo Remo is, is rough. It's rough. Uh, Cody, thank you, brother, for coming yeah. on and no sharing. Sorry, okay. I, I didn't yeah, and keep your chin up, man. Like, keep your chin up, yeah, because you sound all down. Really. You sound down. You do. I'm, you sound really down, but... but the, Man, but, you got people who support you. So. Exactly. And you're supposed to feel that. Renee will probably agree with me with that. You're supposed to feel down. So let those feelings yeah. come and let them be real. But you're, you're, exactly. you're, you're going to move past it. You know? yeah. uh, I'll survive regardless, I guess. So. You will. Send me a message after on, on uh, Messenger and we'll chat. All right, man. All right. All right. You, Keep your chin up, brother. Thank you. He, he'll be all right. He's you just, he's I'll just understandably right. upset. Yeah, I know. I can feel the heartbreak. That's sad, but, yeah, you know, it's going to be okay. All right, sir. Talk to you later. Okay, girls. Well, tonight, woo. We're this going, is great. We're going everywhere tonight. Oh, yeah. but this is cool. But, but you know what? I'm digging this thing where you can kind of have people call in because, like, I kind of want to make the BJ a call this in show. would be a good idea. So mm -hmm. it's kind of cool to have people come in. Uh, but anyway. Guys. And you're going to have to tell me how you did the card shuffling thing. Oh, look at Renee. Mm. Yes. For a price, Renee, for a price. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say something, but I can't say it on, on, on national air. <laughs> yeah. thank you, Cody, by the way, but thank you, Cody. And I apologize if I was short with him. Uh, but we just gotta get on with the show for now. But I definitely I asked him guys, like maybe it was like six months ago that I was like, man, because he he's he's this white boy from Alabama living in a favela. Like, tell me that's not an interesting story. It so, really is. Uh I really wanted him to come on. So now he's got more to this story. So once he gets settled in, I'm gonna give him time to get back in the U.S. and settle in, and then I'd love to have him on. But anyway, Pete knows what this music means. Oh, uh, bollocks, but I don't have the questions queued. It's okay. I have no questions. Sorry. All right. Well, that's the music. All right. Anyway, 
Maya, you still with us? Yes, I'm here. All right, Maya, pay very close attention. We're going to play the expat challenge, and we're going to ask you some questions. Just give us, like, you know, the first thing that comes to mind. And if you answer any incorrectly, we will report it to the federal police. So be very <laughs> careful. Okay. okay. I don't want you okay. to report it quite yet. And Pete, if you find the questions, let me know. If you don't, um, I can just ask them. Um, number one, best thing about Brazil? Handsome men. Handsome men. I got to agree with that, right? Well, there you go. Mm -hmm. Yes. This is very yes. nice to have, like, female guests because, like, most <laughs> people are like, it's got to be, like, the hot women. It's like, oh, great. It's nice to see. Oh, women. I know. The so, men are such, uh, they're, they're too PC when they come on here. Like, they're afraid to just say, like, yeah, there's hot women. There's, like, beautiful butts. Like, you've never seen butts like this ever in your life. There's, Amazing like, butts. They're gorgeous, but the okay. women come on and they're like, yeah, like hot men, they're like sexy. It's like, anyway. All right, question number two. What's the All worst? All right, I, I can do oh. question number two. There um, you go, then, sir. Yeah, I, I just know this from memory, actually. Um, yes, yeah. What is, I, what is the worst thing about Brazil? People trying to steal from you. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, this is true. From your own house, your own friends, this happened to me. Yes. Yeah. Uh, speaking of a bad yeah. dating experience, it was an ex, now ex boyfriend, but we were dating at the time, and he invited his friends over, and yeah, I got robbed in my own house. Oh man, yeah. I've oh, I've gotten robbed in my own house from kids that I let in there. Oh my god. Yes. Yeah. 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 All right, Mia. What's your favorite Brazilian food? Moqueca de camarão. Yes. Oh, yes. That's mine too. Oh, wow. We were, uh, I'm going to share here on the screen for those that you don't, that don't know what a moqueca of, of camarão is. And we were talking about this a few weeks ago when we were talking about best things about Brazil and the food was one of them. And there it is. And uh, I told you, Pete, this is the dish. I don't know if you've ever had a moqueca. But mm -mm -mm. I put coconut cream in mine so that it's super creamy. Mm, that mm. sounds so good. Mm. Like I said, uh, have you ever had the one from Espiritu Santos? Because there's like this, there's this debate about which one is the better one, the one from Bahia or Espiritu Santos. I've had both. I've had both. I Espiritu Santos edged out the Bahia one as much as I love the Bahia one. I think Espiritu Santos edged it out a little. What about you, Renee? Mm, I like the Bahia one better. Yeah, they're both delicious though. It's like but they were both delicious. Yeah. Yeah, it's like whatever, For just give sure. me one. Just and and like I said at that on that other broadcast, uh, spend whatever you got to spend. Don't get a crappy one. If if it looks expensive, whatever, just get a good one, uh, and you will not be disappointed. Uh, Go ahead, Pete. Uh, what is your favorite Brazilian drink? Alcoholic? No, 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 no. Alcoholic. Your least favorite Brazilian food. Okay, was, yeah, sorry. That was the opposite your, question. What's your least your, favorite Brazilian food? Least yes. favorite Brazilian food is probably carne do sol. It's like so dry. <laughs> oh, I agree. Oh, you know what? Okay, this is this is this is your thing, but I want I want to add the carne de sol with the farofa. I'm gonna add the farofa. Oh man! Oh yeah, like, yeah, fucking a man. Farofa sucks. Farofa yeah. sucks. All right, I, but if it's with bacon, if it's got bacon in it, it can be on my plate. If it's just some dry ass farofa like farinha with nothing, <laughs> like I don't need that. Oh yeah, the one with the bacon and stuff. That's more like it's almost like a stuffing. And if you got a, a, something with a nice caldo on it, it's delicious. Now I'm looking at carne de sol, and you know what? I think I'm, I'm with you. I, I don't like it as much as carne seca though, but I love carne seca, which is when it's kind of shredded up a little bit more. And when you eat that with some manjoca and a nice beer, that's really delicious. Seca desfiada right here. Mm. Yeah, you you were right about the local uh, bakery having mandioca soup too. They do. Uh, Ron mm. was a was a big purveyor of mandioca soup, and yeah, this bakery fuck killer soups, man. Every night after six p.m. soup night. 
Oh yeah, we get the fish you've already sold us now because it's winter time. So yeah, you get some really yeah. good soup here. Oh yeah. Actually, right. Remember we went to that CHSP for that fish festival? They usually have a soup festival and it's like, wow, it's really good. It's really good. All right. Um Do you guys have called the Virgie there? Yes. Yes. Yes, we okay. do. So that I didn't know yeah. if that was uh, specific to this state or Brazilian food in general. No, no, it's a pretty general thing. Yeah, it's probably Good. from somewhere. I'm just not sure where. Uh, I can look that up real quick. As you answer the next question, you're doing really well. I have the questions pulled up, by the way. Oh, good. So I'm on next. number five now, which is your favorite drink in Brazil. It can be alcoholic or non-alcoholic. Favorite drink? So I'm going to say that it, I'm going to say this, and not everybody says that they know what this is or understand what it is but batida de coco it's like a caipirinha but instead of fruit it has creamy de coco in it and it still has the sugar in it so it's like a milkshake with cachaça and it's so good and creamy but you oh maya i like you just from that yeah that sounds so good it's delicious but you can have like two or three of them you can't like drink six of them because like your just stomach is going to be full of cream right i know exactly what you're talking about and i've made it in my house by the way i looked up where caldo vidger's from and then they just say it's from a province in the north of portugal and i guess they just brought it over so it's really just a brazilian, brazilian. it's a portuguese drink yeah okay. uh but anyway the batida de coco you said right yeah this is very delicious mm. uh and yeah if they put that that creamy in there they put this uh heavy cream whatever this brazilian cream that they have on there and kind of sort of pina colada ish but i think it tastes a little better and yeah. easy to make Lada. easy to make at home you know you just buy what is it? it's it's leche condensada right it's the condensed milk if i'm not mistaken or is it the, dosage one, leche? the one that i've had that i like is um just with the coconut cream Okay. Mm, nice. Okay. Because uh, a lot of times when they make pachidas, you put some condensed milk in there. So I've made them at home with pineapple, with um, with coconut, and then you just put it all in the blender with, you know, some whatever parts, uh, condensed milk, and then your fruit, and then your cachaça, and you're good to go, man. And oh, yeah, that'll knock, you out. that'll knock you out. You'll sleep well after that. It's on you, Peter. All right. So next question is, best place you have ever visited? In Brazil. Yes. Best place oh, I've yes. ever visited in Brazil? Um, I mean, I really like where I live, you guys. Um, not necessarily all my neighbors, but... <laughs> yeah. I live five kilometers from the beach, which is not on the beach front, um, but it's close enough for me and it's what I could afford. And I have like, I have sagui running through the yard and like birds like drop. There was some big like um, yellow and green bird today uh, that flew through here. And, um, it's just super naturey and rainforesty. Yeah, that's, that's, that's nice. Little nice little beach town. Uh, but have you been to any place outside of this Mata de São João that you really liked? Um, I really like, I like Boipeba a lot. I have a friend, or I had, did have an American friend who's living there. What is it called? Boipeba. Boipeba. Yes. Like, there's no cell phone service. There's no cars. So you go there oh, wow. to relax. Wow, look at this place. Looks paradisic. Very gorgeous. Look at this nice Yeah, little. I love Bo Peppa as well. Beautiful, beautiful place. All right, so is it on me, Pete? I believe so. It's what? on you, yeah. Uh, really? Oh, yes, it is. Most overrated location or thing in Brazil? Um... I mean, I haven't been to Rio de Janeiro yet, but I feel like the Christ the Redeemer statue would probably maybe fit that category. <laughs> Everybody mad at me now? No. No, no, no. no Y'all no. hate Rio. I'm joking. Yeah. Oh, thanks. 
Well, we don't have the people in Rio. We said we <laughs> in fact, yeah. It, it could be a thing, though. It doesn't have to be a location. Like, I'm, I'm, about- I'm with her, though. I'm with her because I went to Rio. I've been to Rio twice. I hated it the first time. Wasn't Didn't like it that much more the second time. But I took the tourist thing the second time. And I went to all the spots, you know, like the, the little church, the Sambodromo. I love Pão de Açúcar, but then we went up to the Christ statue and it was underwhelming. Like even the views, like Pão de Açúcar, I love the views. Like you take that little tram up and the view of the city for me was gorgeous. And there's this little, little park that up there with all the monkeys and stuff. And I loved it. Pão de Açúcar was like my favorite spot. But Christ the Redeemer, you get up there, it's crowded as hell. Oh, I shouldn't say that talking about Christ the Redeemer, but it's very crowded, let's say. And <laughs> yeah, you get the nice, it's a statue. I mean, it's not super tall, but you see the statue and you're like, okay, there's a statue. And then you kind of go around in a circle because there's not a lot else where to go. And I didn't think the views of the city were that spectacular compared to uh, the views from Ponja Sugar. So I was underwhelmed by it. And so you might be, you know, uh, but all right, let's move ahead. All right. Um Wow, this is going to be really specific because you live in a small town. Uh, best place to chill in your city? Best place to chill in my city. Um, well, there's a little like downtown area here, and the downtown area here is really. Um, I don't know if any of you guys have been to Itakare, but it's like Itakare, but like smaller and more dense i guess Mm -hmm. um but it's like a cute little they always have live music down there and a lot of restaurants and little artisanal shops and stuff and um that's a really cool place to just go and like be there and people watch and just like take in the atmosphere is this it like this little area here the downtown um it's if you are you on pride du forci I just put Saint through Matos de São João Bahia, and I'm getting these images. You're like at the the little capital of the prefecture. If you type uh, in Praia do Forte, you'll probably see the downtown little area. I've heard of this place before, but I, Praia do Forte. There you go. Yeah. Ooh, that's cute. It's got a really cute little downtown area, and there's usually, you know, it's different since pandemic. Yeah, there, there we go. It's super cute. I like that. I like that. And then Pete, go ahead. Um, no, I believe next. Oh, yeah, I'm the odd numbers. Okay, favorite Brazilian musician or band? Favorite Brazilian musician or band? Yeah, Uh, most people fail at this one badly. So choose your answers wisely. Okay. Okay. Um,. Okay, I'm not going to say anything super popular. Um, you know what? I'm going to go with the first Brazilian music I ever heard or became familiar with, which is Martinho da Vila. Oh, that's a great choice. Classic. That's yeah, I still choice. like them. Classic Sambista, legendary. Oh, cool. And I, I often get like... Um, I often get as a response from people here that they're like, you listen to old people music. And I do listen to old people music. Um, I listen to some younger music as well, but I, those were the first, um, the first Brazilian bands or musicians that I heard were guys like that and like Jackson do Pandeiro and. Um, well, wow, Jesus is the good stuff. Yeah. Those were like really emotionally. Um, like I connected uh with my, I connected my Brazilian experience to that music emotionally, I suppose. Yes, I don't know, but he's a, he's a great sambista, he's old school, so like the lyrical content is really great too. Uh, very poetic, it's not just the dumb pop music you get these days. Even the sambas nowadays are like, oh my god, they're really dumb. And actually, his daughter, if you haven't listened to his daughter, is really good. That's her in the picture right there, Marchinella. She's really good, but he's 83. Look at that, 83 years young. Crazy. Uh, really, really good. Um, and I'm not a huge fan of Samba, but I'll listen to him at, um, 
every once in a while. I'll link, guys, as usual, whenever people bring up their musical choices, check the comments, and I'll get you a playlist on there. And last one, Peter, it's on you. Yes, one word of advice for future visitors coming to the country. Um, okay, only one word? Um, and well, no, no, not literally <laughs> one word, like a piece of advice. Yes, I'll change that because you're the second person. I, I just, that's okay, here's my, okay, here's well, my, um, for people coming to the country, if you fall in love with somebody, don't take it that seriously. Oh, good lord. Yeah, that's, that's cynical. Do not quit your job. Do not like make huge sacrifices. Do not move to wherever that person lives. Like, don't do any of those things. Um, yeah, I, well, I agree with that 100%. 100%. Yeah, it's so easy to fall in love here. And it, it will happen if you visit here. You'll fall in love with somebody. And that somebody will be... Because people here are so emotionally exuberant that, yeah. you know... They, up in the moment and they don't modulate themselves in the same way that Americans do and so uh, if they feel like saying they're in love with you that's just going to come out of their mouth they're not going to hold back so you do have to be careful and, and protect yourself a little bit I agree. Mia, yeah. no more no more Mia and that is a good theme to end the show exactly she ended it on she's a pro and she did not fail the quiz she ended it on the theme Thanks, and guys. She, and she got Renee to cackle in the background. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we all feel that. Um, well, everyone that hung out with us and those that listened on the replay. Thank yeah, it's you. been great, man. We had a lot of people hanging out. With we had a lot of people on. Uh, it was a bit of a long show today, but we needed to give Watif his uh, tribute because he was a hell of a dude. And like I said, Brazil Expat Journal and all this stuff was, you know, I, I, I always had the idea in my head, but he gave me the stiff kick in the ass to really get it going. And I even stopped for a little bit. And then he gave me a second stiff kick in the ass to get it going. Um, and so we're here. We are here and we enjoy your company. We'll be back in two weeks, maybe. I'm going to put a question mark on that because I may be traveling. So depending yeah, we'll be traveling too. we might be back in august um but ladies you rock the house as usual i mean yeah always pete oh, and i know yes that. yes first ladies yeah, first time meeting maya but you know renee renee has been with us for a long time oh yes and uh oh, she renee. always rocks it she thank you maybe it's I, I love being on here. I, I enjoy myself. You guys are awesome. It's always yes. fun. Yes. Um, so that's it, guys. I just want to, any last words, Maya, before we head out to wherever? No, thank you so much for the invitation. You guys are all amazing conversationalists, and I could talk to you guys all night. All right. Well, you know my number. Okay. So we got some outro music. Check this out. Thank you for listening to the Brazil Expat Journal, the BJ you can trust. Hope to see you again soon. And rest in peace, Watif. And don't forget to like and subscribe. You like my radio voice. That's a sexy radio voice. <laughs> That's my NPR voice. All right, bye.